the beginning, there was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. I gotta get away this. No! Say, hey, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on you, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes I cry. Oh! Miss my butthole, he laughed. <laughs> From the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective, here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Hello, everybody. This is Drunken Peasants Podcast. This is episode 1157. We're back again. We've got Vosh. What's up? What's up? You know, I Herman Cain is in our intro, and I just want him to stay in there forever, preserved in well, time. Well, Herman Cain is eternal. Yeah, yeah. He's not the nine ninety nine guy, right? He was the nine ninety nine. I plan. get confused with him, and then the the ten percent is that it, or no? The the too damn high. The rent, the rent is, is too, too damn high. Yeah, yeah. Those are two totally different people. Yeah, Herman two, Cain. Coincidentally, was, two totally black people. Why'd you uh, Why'd you mix <laughs> them up, huh? Because their financial plans are so simple. Yeah, that's true. No, that's that's true. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I you like know, the that. The taxes are too damn high. Yeah, I like that. But Herman Cain, he was the guy that owned Godfather Pizza, or he was like the CEO or yeah. something like that. Yeah, and then Trump uh, basically took him a bunch of places, and he got COVID and died. That's what happens when yeah, you hang was... out with Trump. Didn't uh, Christie almost die too? Chris Christie almost died, even with I his governor's it's... wealth. It is. It is so fucked up. That for a brief period of time, the MAGA crowd got to be full of goofy goobers, and now it's just full of, like, obviously evil lizard men and fascists, you know? Like, we had a period of time where there was a little bit more charm and character to the whole crowd, and now it's just, like, it's just across the board, just, like, fucking evil, you know? Who is the most charming uh, if you go through the entire history of the MAGA crowd? Matt, for me personally, yeah. it's it's got to be like Rudy Giuliani. He's brought me so much joy, um, and now he's now he he can't he can't come back. You know, like yeah. he he's expended his. At one point, he was like second in in command to the world after nine eleven. Like he was like the guy everybody turned to for comfort. That's not even what he like. His biggest accomplishment was the Four Seasons landscaping thing. That was amazing. Well, I'm, I'm saying that, that was phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, that was the his best his thing ever. his public approval was through the roof during 9/11. All you had to do was be in power during 9/11, and if you were cl- the closer you were to it, the higher your approval. A lot, of, a lot of youngsters yeah, like, won't know this. He was once like highly even, regarded. Yep, yeah, Bush had a 90 percent approval rating, and this was like, I, I mean, liberals always fucking hated Bush, and even they. When turning out for the polls, ninety percent approval rating after yeah. 9-11. After nine eleven, you were in power. It was low. Time. He was very low before. That was actually the last time we got national unity. I, yeah. That might actually be like the last time in American history, maybe ever, that we had like a concept of of bipartisan, like totally unambiguous national unity. I, I don't think that's going to happen again. Did we no. have about two weeks of fear during COVID where people were like not sure what was going to happen yet? And we they were, were not like, sure, but there wasn't unity like on 9-11's level. I feel like if 9-11 happened now, it wouldn't, it, we, we'd be pointing fingers at each other. Oh, oh, it's, okay. First of all, like immediately um, House Republicans would, would put forward a bill to like arrest Ilhan Omar for doing it herself personally <laughs> oh for flying it into the tower. And that like there would be like riot, like fighting on the streets. There would be like a bunch of people immediately cl- like the, the, not, the conspiracy theories would be like day one. Now it would be like, obviously, this was a hologram. You know, there wouldn't even be like a, a, a delay to it. It'd be it'd be fucked. I almost want like for experiment purposes, a second 911, like a 912, if you will. So we can like compare like how bad things have gotten. Yeah, I feel like Alex Jones would blame the five G towers. I don't is, know. Is there like I don't know if we should talk about this. I don't <laughs> I don't I don't know what like as as a as a thought experiment, what would be a good target? Oh my god. Is that not saying it should Wait. happen. I don't want it to what? happen. For, like what about what if it hit a five G tower? Because then like who would be mad? 
Sprint, Ver- like Verizon Wireless, T-Mobile, you know. Yeah, yeah, it just crashes right into one, well, just like, and then a second one right after, the and then a third one nearby just Hope falls over its own. Well Sorry, RTTS interrupts thing. No worry. Yeah, we're uh, all we're all recovered. But yeah, it's it's. Uh, is there is there will people get behind a 5g tower the way they got behind the twin towers well they were blaming the conspiracy theorists in the early days of covid were blaming 5g for it i remember they were putting up 5g towers around the same time and there was some video i think it was out of the uk this woman was harassing this guy who was building a cell site a 5g cell site so oh so yeah sometimes uh, 5g towers will just get like shot at by like gunmen will drive by and just shoot at them which it's it's so wild because like if you go back basically every time a new type of tower has been put up these people show up again when we first developed like electricity and like conduits with with t- with you know like like cable towers running through cities people thought like ah the electricity will strangle us every everyone was fucking um was was fucking chuck mcgill from better call saul like every <laughs> every human and then like every time we we get some new tower people are like okay okay fine well the, all that previous stuff was crackpot bullshit this however will definitely be the end of society and it's gonna keep being like this I heard the same stuff about Wi-Fi when Wi-Fi started becoming a normal thing people were having in their houses. My dad wouldn't let us have a microwave until we were like 15 because he thought it was going <laughs> to destroy our, our brains or something. I don't know. Fry our testicles. I don't know what it was. Were you putting your testicles in the microwave? Not usually, no. Okay. Unusually, maybe. Oh, you know, Vosh, I was, I, I've been meaning to ask you, what was the whole uh, thing that was going on with the, the regarded word? Regarded. Yeah. Was oh, you the... mean retarded? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the one. Oh, I can... oh, yeah, we can... Um, thing going on. I still say it a lot. What happened? Was there, like, a specific drama? W- w- weren't people mad at you for saying it or something? Oh, okay. This has been, like, an ongoing thing, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's like... <sighs> It's not a nice thing to say because it, it is problematic and like ableism is the thing and blah, blah, blah. Um, I think that we all do this to an extent. Like pretty much everyone says dumb or stupid. Um, right. I guess my issue, I, I'm trying to do like brain calculus on this, right? And it's like you can, you can have two types of communities, right? One of which gets really mad when I say retard and one of which kind of like accepts it. And I think that even if saying retard maybe isn't like perfect, I'd rather have the community that could accept it than the one that couldn't. Because I think the one that couldn't would be like, I don't know, like terminally online, like ineffective. I agree. You know what I mean? I agree. And I say I, I say regarded when I'm on YouTube because I don't know because the rules are always changing and who knows when that'll become some kind of banned word. But I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, the word retard it didn't wasn't always used to refer to people who were mentally challenged it just meant to like go back right it was like i only like using the word because it gets confusing when you say r word because there's multiple r words yeah and people will say r slur and i'm thinking like r slur um okay yeah i i I don't know i mean it's it's probably people probably shouldn't say it my main issue with saying it is that it makes me um it makes me really lazy like before i'd try my best to think of funny like shit to say and then it's like oh i can just say retarded it makes you lazy you know yeah yeah like i don't like to say the uh you know the uh the pedo word so we say pdf file like that guy might be a PDF yeah that's a classic file. they they do that on tiktok too because the fucking the the ccp will shoot you in the back of the head if TikTok's, you use the word damn tiktok's full TikTok. of those too there's so many pdf files on tiktok it's nuts. oh god yes it's not that I, was like the main thing i knew the app for back when it first went from music.ly to tiktok it was like there'd be like everyone knew it's like there's just a bunch of like weirdo guys on there looking at high school girls dancing and leaving comments underneath it that was the main thing i knew about it yeah i look at like lesbian moms now that i feel like that's safe there's also the phenomena where it was causing people like children to get facial and vocal tics which is funny because it's tiktok <laughs> you know? Wait, how was it causing them to get ticks? I, there was like a whole. Let, let me find a, a thing about that. There was like an article. While Ben's looking, I do want to sta- state that we don't use the R word around here because a lot of our top donors are R words, and uh, we uh-huh. don't want to we don't want to piss them off because they pay our bills. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, maybe they have like a, um, maybe they're like uh, you know kind of submissive. 
<laughs> and they, maybe they like it a little bit. That's kind of what I thought. Chat. I thought that like the so, more you dig at somebody, the more they end up dishing out. So I it's it says that. it says here teen girls are watching TikTok videos featuring influencers who have ticks. Then because they're watching these videos so often, their brains start to mimic the ticks. Oh God! Is so wait by ticks here? Would it would this be like I don't? Would this be like watching a bunch of like um uh, uh like king of queens or seinfeld or something and then starting to sound like some of the people who you're watching a bunch or are we talking like it like a like a neurological um disorder where they're starting to develop that um that pattern themselves you know they might be mimicking people who actually have like tourette's or something like that i don't know if it actually changes something I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, Do you know in my Seinfeld watching days, whenever I'd walk into a new room, I'd make a little jazz riff sound with my mouth. I, I couldn't help it. Did you hear? Did you ever see that Seinfeld simulator or the AI? Yeah, yeah, the AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh um, my god, that was really funny. They're yeah. gone now. They never came back. They got taken it down. Fin. It's rough. Vosh, Just fucked much up. respect. I envy your beard. <laughs> you know, a lot of good beards and beard potentials here. You know. Um, um, yeah, the Seinfeld shit was really fucking funny. The way they got it taken down with the transphobia, that was, that was something. But if you see what the AI bot said, and again, we can't really do an intent thing here because it's literally a bot, yeah. but, <laughs> um, it w the thing it said wasn't actually transphobic. Yeah. It was saying like, nobody's laughing at me. What do you want? Should I be transphobic? Like it was, it was actually pretty funny. I think that Twitch was just really nervous because I mean, it's like a bot. So at any moment it could just start like dropping the end bomb, like over and over and over again, you know, doesn't it, didn't it take cues from the chat? Like whatever people were typing in the chat that I don't know. About. Okay. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know the know. depth of it. Okay. I know That's that really if, fun. I know that when you were watching the Bob Ross Twitch stream, if you typed uh, paintbrushes in the Twitch stream, he would do like a paint stroke. And if you typed uh, trees, he would make happy little trees. But then I realized these were all recorded like 40 years ago. So he was just doing that anyways. Oh, he just convenient. does it so often. It's, it's, it, yeah, it blew my it's, mind. It's, very, it's like doing a rain dance where, where you're like, you know, like, Bob Ross, Bob boo, Ross. Boo, boo. boo. Do, <laughs> do a tree. Um, and then he does a tree and you're like, yes. And you basically just build a religion off you, of this. You know, you actually, you may have just come up with a brilliant idea for a new AI. If they, if they had a Bob Ross painting AI, kind of like the sign. It would one. end up painting like something racist. It would be a great. <laughs> Everybody talks about how quickly the AI turns racist. I don't know no, if that's fair. It it it, ha it has it's like an abstracted painting that it's doing. And you like, you're squinting to look a little bit closer and it's starting to look more like, um, Kanye's album cover for Dark Twisted Beautiful Fantasy. You're like, wait a <laughs> no. second, hold on. Wait, you, you see like the paint stroke of like the dick and, and you're like, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. If I was an AI, I would just draw dicks too. That's what I hate about the uh, Mid Journey AI app. You can't like, you can't have a gnarly throbber. They, they're like, sorry, we don't do sexual images. Why not? I'm a grown I'm adult. Sexual. Yeah, imagine developing tech like that and then going, you know what? No, we're not going to use this for pornography. What the yeah. fuck are you talking yeah. about? What are, give, you, what are you doing? Give me a, a, a dildo in the style of a, a 1990s Mad Max. Not Mad Max. What's Was it Mini Max? I, I don't want to say Polly Pocket because that's a girl thing. But like Mighty Max. Mighty Max. Yeah, you know the little toy that had the yeah. little, uh, little character guy in a house? I want the dildo that looks like a little Mighty Max toy. It opens up and he's in there like with stink nuggets or something. I don't know how it would work, but I like that's why I like the best about AI. They they would just make the weirdest shit, and it, it's not that weird if you can't have dicks. You real talk. I fucking hate AI art. I'm like a I'm like borderline z like zealous anti AI art. Um, yeah. Though it, it does produce some pretty funny shit sometimes. I have to say, didn't the corridor crew get shit recently because they were like. Hey, look at this new way of doing animation, and it was basically like a automatic AI rotoscoping or something. I've seen that. Was was that who 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 did it? Who brought it to the forefront? I th I think it was the Corridor Crew that oh, made yeah. the video. And I saw a lot of people being mad on Twitter over that one. Though they're like a super huge channel, so so maybe most people don't care. But I, the people I follow do, I guess. I, I just like the idea of things being created outside of the mind of a human. 
Because they go so backwards. It's like it's, to get to certain areas, it goes like so far from where a human might think. Yeah, it's. I don't mind AI art as long as it's identifiable as AI art. If if it's a spectacle, like the Seinfeld thing, right? It's like it's a distinct artistic piece that's identifiable as like an AI thing, and that's part of the fun, right? The worry that I have is just like you're going to have all these crypto bro grifters getting in on it, being like, yeah, bro, art is dead. Like, here's the new thing. And they're going to like do a bunch of concept art using AI, and then like actual artists are going to have their shit stolen, but like they're not going to get hired for projects, and it's just going to turn into a fucking mess. What? the scenes you know what do you think of the people who uh, they want like an ai controlled government someday like they think that's the best future for humanity those people are fucking psychotic <laughs> and also need to <laughs> stop replaying deus ex absolute loonies these these insane technocrats the problem is like no matter how you develop a program somebody is in charge of tweaking that program um, there's no actual AI. It's all like algorithms and programs that even to some extent humans have influence over. And I think the problem with this like tech fetishism is the idea that an AI would somehow be like this ambivalent, impartial, above it all, you know, like free of bias. But all everything we know about AI says the opposite. AI is full of bias because the sources that it pulls from and the people who design the AI like have a huge influence on that. If we were going to start a cult and the cult was ran off of we ran an AI simulator to decide how everybody in the cult's days would best be spent for the next five years. That's Brave New World, basically. In Brave yeah. New World, like an AI decides what yeah. everybody does. So we'll figure out the best moves for everybody to make for the next five years, and we're in a cult, so who cares? We'll follow it. We don't have to vote anything in. See how much damage we can do before we break away from the AI. I think people would go for that. People really like being told what to do. Not yeah. even as like a sex thing. People are just really fucking insecure. I think I'm not sure if it's that. not a sex thing. I, I feel like it's like it, everything comes down to a sex thing. Yeah, it's kind of like how furries are like, oh, it's not a fetish thing, you know. It's, but, it, it almost always is a sex. And when I went to see that Catholic movie about uh, Padre Pio, it's like I, I never, I never spent time in Catholicism. Wait, before. what movie? Uh, there was a uh, a documentary I went to go see. It was in Italian. I was just I have this movie pass where I go see movies all the time for like twenty bucks. He sees a month. more movies than anyone I've ever met in my life. And I saw this this Padre right. Pio documentary. I was like, oh, I got some time. Let's go watch it. And I'm watching it. And it's in Italian, but I'm I'm seeing all these videos of like 1960s Padre Pio Catholicism, and I'm I'm watching. I'm like, this is all just domination. Like this Padre is just doming every person in the church. And, like, it's not sexual, but it's not not sexual. It's very weird. It's, yeah, it's latent. It's, it's like, underlying. It's very Freudian. You're creating oh, an... Yeah. Yeah. You're basically I, creating I, an entire... There is still a human behind I Isn't That Just the Plot of Blade Runner. Ooh. Yeah, there was... I mean, there was corporal punishment in Catholic schools f for quite some time. Unless well, Catholics was, are yeah. insanely horny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it's it's the they, way it's designed. Have been. The, yeah, the, well, it, it it has to be. You take all the like pent up sexual energy and you try to find ways of sating that without like mor mortal sin, right? So yeah. you you know you might not have like fucking, but you have a bunch of like weird power domination, sadomasochistic bullshit that gets integrated into the structure of your religion, and people get like really fucking zealous about it. It's like okay, well, I know what you're doing here, you know. It's like emotional masochism too, because they're because uh, I went to Catholic school K through twelve, and that you're always there's always that Catholic guilt that they put on you. Everybody talks about how the uh, the cross dressers at the library are grooming kids, but the <laughs> like how many times were you in Catholic confession and the, the the priest was like, so what else did you do this week trying to push like a, a jerk off story out of you? That's never happened. I swear that that's happened to a ton of people I talk to. I don't know if it's a regular thing or if it's just every single person I ever talked to uh, about this had a weird priest that was like, like what else before, did you do? Before they did the Vatican Council, when they reformed a lot of stuff in the Catholic Church, they had... Uh you you didn't face the priest like they were on the other side of like a screen and you couldn't actually see each other but then after they did those reforms you had the choice of doing it the old way or you could sit like face to face it was almost like a weird therapy session from someone who wasn't qualified to be a therapist i have friends who said they used to make stuff up to tell the priest cuz he wouldn't like leave them alone until they gave him something like weird 
I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I, I, I could leave whenever I wanted to. I didn't have to go in if I didn't want to. So, did you ever like I, just I, offer I, something weird off the bat? What we know, knowing what we know about the Catholic Church, the idea that priests would be super weird and would be trying to prompt like weird confessions is not exactly like an insane thing to suggest. It feels pretty straightforward. Like, yeah, I look. I have uh, never done anything Catholic at all. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I was raised agnostic. But from what I know of Catholics, I fully believe this. I'm on board. You know, I would rather die um, than, than renounce my belief in this thing that I just heard about. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, the, the organization is insanely corrupt. Uh, just in like the, the diocese that I grew up in, there was like a murder cover up where a, a priest murdered a nun with a with a letter opener. And the, the case was closed for like three decades, and then they opened it back up and found the DNA evidence. Probably didn't have them. room for weirdo priests at your one, so you grew up just fine, didn't have those weird questions, because they had to keep it I super was, tight because they were hiding a murder. I was just lucky. I'm, no, no, no. I mean, there was, there was a priest at my high school that had CP on his computer and went to jail for a little while for it. So, I mean, I was, it was around me, but I was never directly victimized, yeah. you know, so lucky i guess just Roll just back. sort of approximate you know yes yeah. um yeah it's, it's an issue it's it's not anything it's not something you can actually do anything about either i don't think at least not the way they want to because i think that what a lot of people kind of imagine is that there's like a group of pedos and pedo supporters in the catholic church hierarchy yeah and it's like okay well you have to root them out and i don't think it's that simple i think the 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 system makes a lot of these people pedos or, or pedophiles or whatever um I, I i think that this really weird obsession with like patrilineal hierarchy and like having this like sacred man in a giant empty space shepherding over the flock yeah i think i think these things just like innately produce these yeah. these well, um it's like abusive relations. The the, yeah. the forced celibacy is a big That's problem. That's really weird too. Yeah, That's so weird. And the, the the problem with that is you get a lot of these people who have these kind of intrusive thoughts, and they're also very religious, and they think that joining the priesthood will help them. You know, the the forced celibacy of the priesthood will help them fight those urges. But then they, then they discover they find themselves alone with children a lot because. You're like one of the most trusted members of the community because you went to seminary for a couple of years. You know, it's very weird without any qualifications to work with kids or any vetting or anything like that. No, so. you just to be to be a Catholic priest, you just need like um, like an M.A. Or, or like a doctorate in theology. Right. You, you, you need higher education. But you, you also like there are lower levels than priests where you can still just be like the guy at the church. You know, yeah, you, there, there's like deacon and. Yeah. yeah, I see a comment. I think or, that's higher up. There, there or are, they I, do I mean, it on purpose is the other comment. Do a lot. <laughs> I, I do think like that's the, the, the perfect way to go into if you have those those uh, urges is to, to put yourself in that position as well. The the most disgusting thing that the that the church does is when they they protect their own uh, and they'll move these offenders around before there's like a, really a thorough investigation. Yeah, uh, they just move to a new area and they reoffend. Yeah, and that yeah. there was another one uh, in my hometown where he ended up getting kicked out of the priesthood, but he was still allowed to work in education for years after that. Um, there was actually uh, it's called Twist of Faith. It was a documentary that was nominated for an Oscar. Uh, uh, the same year as Fahrenheit 9-11, so it didn't win, but it's about a guy in my hometown that went to the same high school as me that found out that the priest that molested him lived like a block away from him, and it's like just like a documentary about how he dealt with that and, and dealing with knowing that the guy is still free and like working in education. So you think and, fat shit Michael Moore was hired by the Catholic Church to do no, a, I don't a bigger think documentary and cover no. up this scandal? No, no. I don't. Well, I mean, they, they, he was the guy they got for the documentary on Skull Island and the, the tremendous ape uh, who fought dinosaurs. So, it, you know, it, he's, he's, got, he's got his chops cut out when it comes to um, invest, investigative work like that. Oh, my God. My new, oh, no. Wait, I got to show you. My new cat is just loud because he's dead. Wait, hold on. I, I, <laughs> okay. I that the Vatican sure. Fire Department must also be celibate. Yeah. Like, what is the point? <laughs> the fire department has to be celibate? If they're priests, yeah. And well, I think you have to be a priest to live in the Vatican. Then I think the point is to be locked up in a uh, Okay, you got it. You got to full screen me. Okay. Another hot guy. Uh, let's see. There you go. Look at this. Oh, oh wow. Look at this. Such Wait, a little kitty. 
Put it this way. Okay, he's he's wiggly, but he's in a good mood because he just. Oh my god! Here, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! He's the w- wiggliest little guy. <laughs> How old is he? He's like five months old, and he's deaf, and he's brain damaged because he had a oh fever god. when he was like zero seconds old. Oh, yeah. I wow. I had to deal with a health issue because uh, I have a dog that's seven. 17 years old and she had all these crazy seizures she had like eight seizures in one day and it caused her brain to swell and she was all jesus uh her motor skills and everything were limited but luckily she made a full recovery it's very oh. yeah yeah I, I thought it was the end because she was all weird and twitchy and couldn't walk anymore but she's back to how she was before it happened i guess seizures cause brain swelling so that's that's what the problem was but it went back to normal Oh, I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. seizures seizures um, generally bad for your health, I'm pretty sure. Yes. I don't know much about it, though. Yeah. Seizures are like orgasms in your brain. Seizures? Se- little seizures. <laughs> pizza, well, pizza. So, no, C- Caesar's pizza is like an orgasm in your brain. Seizures <laughs> are, they kill you. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. I just smell burnt toast either way. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um, I actually hate Caesar's pizza. Um, it is, it's the, trash unless you're like worried about spending six dollars on a pizza. Like if, if six dollars is all you have for pizza, then it's it's adequate, I guess. I always thought Domino's was the best of the like regular fast food pizza chains. They're really cheap and their pizza is edible. I don't know what else you're trying to get at that price point, you know? Yeah, I, I worked at Domino's in high school, and it's it. it it's always I don't know if I'm biased because of that, but it always seemed like the better option for the the shit spots. Yeah, when I was a kid, Pizza Hut was on top of the fast food pizza wars, but I think Domino's has surpassed them since then. They changed the recipe or something. I remember their food quality got distinctly better yeah. at some point. Me yeah, and there my was comrades like, get pizza from Costco though. There was like a Dom- Domino's Renaissance uh, at some point. Um, and really then, had American culture by the short hairs right there. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it, it, what's the other one? Papa John's. Eh. Like there was a point where I was like, oh, Papa John's is good, but it got old. I never gave a fuck about a Papa John's. I, it's not that I, great. It's not the hate, best Papa. And I a hate Papa. Pa- I, do, I was going to say I hate Papa Murphy's. Papa I'm Murphy's sorry. is better than Papa John's because you can buy it with food stamps. Shout out to my comrades. Isn't Papa John's culture war now? Didn't the Papa John's guy get he involved said, in this? He I said forget. the big end yeah, bomb. But, but he got was, fired from his was, own company. That was after he was featured on H3H3 podcast. And once you go on H3H3, you have to get canceled for saying the N-word. You have to say the N-word. Yeah, yeah. of course. That's Them's the rules. That's the beats. That's why, that's, that's why I can't go on the H3H3 podcast, because I said the N-word too early. <laughs> you, you really <laughs> screwed everything up. <laughs> yeah, I fucked up the timing. He he was he he just takes pleasure in like cultivating that, and and I just you know I, I'm spoiled. <laughs> oh man, I wish you could see him, Danil. That's the little cat right down there. He's right here by my foot. He's just staring up at me. I have no idea what he wants. He's just staring. He's got big, beautiful kitty eyes. So yeah, cute. oh little baby, look at you. Oh, is he the? Went to the vet today. Is he got the, the? Is he the deaf one or is that? Is there multiple? Yeah, he, yeah, he's the he's he, the deaf okay, one. Yeah, okay. or we we think he's deaf. He might have like a little bit of hearing, probably. Maybe it's kind of hard to tell. Cats are pretty perceptive. I've never been a cat owner, but the house I'm living in right now has uh, this fat cat. His his name's Jim. He's like the really fat cat, and I adore him. He's he's old and fat, and he just sits around. And sometimes I'll walk in on him when he's eating, and he's not even standing. He's just laying with his head in the bowl. He's like got his head <laughs> curled up like it's a pillow, eating sideways. I adore that cat. Just swimming in a big pile of kibble. Yeah, he's a Absolutely chonker. Absolutely adorable. I love I love cats. Cats are so good. Dogs take a lot of effort to take care of. You know, obviously dogs are amazing, but you got to walk them and stuff. And I'm not too good for that kind of regular care. But having having cats chilling in your Can place is just like tell Vush that he has free adorable pussy, and that the individual stallion is ready for him. You have an adorable uh-huh. pussy. Um, uh, thank you. There are certain dog breeds that are way lower maintenance. Like Chihuahuas are super low maintenance. They don't need a bunch I of hate exercise. Chihuahuas. I love Chihuahuas. <laughs> I love them so much. I, I hate little yip dogs. I oh, can't I love stand them. them. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big I, I like mid sized to big dog is where my sweet spot is. Uh, I like them all. 
Yeah, dogs are great. I, I just I I like I like a dog that I feel like if I had to fight it, he'd have a chance. Okay. Well, yeah, because they're like because dogs because when I when I think you know like the the ultimate dog or like the ideal dog form or whatever you know I think of like some fantasy art cover where there's like a like five feet off the ground like this wolf you know that, yeah. that assists you in 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 the great hunt. Uh, you know, cats are a bit far off from that, but you can get some pretty fucking big dogs in your house, man. Or, or like a, a, like a Saint Bernard with a whiskey barrel on his neck and a big old throbbing pink dog dick, full full flashlight chapstick. That's the type of dog I would want in my fantasy. Um, there are actually world. no female Saint Bernards. Is that that's that's got to be true, right? <laughs> yeah, because of the dick thing. Yeah. Well, the females can have dicks, Vosh. What is this? It's twenty twenty three. Oh shit! Did fuck, you, you're right. Did yeah, we sorry. see Blair I, I even, White, right? She knows the liberal, the, the liberal Saint Bernards have penises, and the the, the conservative Saint Bernards have guns. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's it's they all have penises. Just only half of them have guns, in addition to the penises. Oh, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it was a bulge debate, right? For those that don't know, it's uh, Blair White posted that um, conservative. Women, if you see a bulge in a conservative woman's pants, it's it's a gun, and if you see a bulge in a liberal woman's pants, it's a dick, right? Yeah, I think. Well, I I, th I think it's if you see a large bulge in a liberal woman's pants, it's because she has a large penis, and if you see a large bulge in a conservative woman's pants, it's because she has a small penis That's... and next to it a gun, and together. They're about the same. That's what eyes. I put together, too. I'm like, there must be that conservative women have shriveled, tiny penis. Small dicks. Yeah. yeah. So, Which makes yeah. sense to me. I mean, Blair White's been on record saying her schwanz doesn't work, right? Uh, she, yeah, I, yeah. With, I mean, she's been on hormones for a billion years, so I imagine yeah. probably not by now. Yeah. She don't need a workable dick. She, she's working with so much more. That bot and a gun, that's good. That's good. Well, it depends on the gun, obviously. You know, you, you you know, we can't we can't we can't drop quality assessments just because now we're on to um, literal hardware. I mean, if it's a shitty little gun like a Glock or something, then then I don't even think the compensation is happening. I feel like I would like a small gun just because I could hide it in one of my fat folds. Like if I ever had to go to prison, I'm pretty sure I could sneak a gun in under one of my rolls. I think I'd be I'd be running shit in prison with my little twenty two. That I snuck That's in under one of in. my nipples. Yeah. I'd have like a pound of Coke in one crack and a fucking twenty two in the other. And I'd just set up shop. Yeah, you'd be like the um what are you boy guy from, from RE4, and you just pull up in your coat and all the, the folds would jiggle and people would see like a glimpse of the hardware, you know, the oh. like uh the cold shine of metal. Yeah, I'm like a transhumanist vending machine. Just hand me hand me that a quarter and like a little candy bar comes out of one of my flabs. Literally, the fucking the Duke from 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 RE RE eight. Did you play Resident Evil eight? I didn't know. I I'm I'm such a sucker when it comes to actual video games. I play Tetris. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. What? I'm just like, what? I don't know. I, I I played Magic the Gathering cards when I was a kid, so I like don't get into video games now because I'm I have this analog brain when it comes to gaming. It's so stupid. You know what? He he had a Pokemon Go addiction, and you know how like I kind of respect that. He, I, I would see him because, you know, he, he comes here to my place to do the show, but I would notice, I would like look out my front window, like, like a half hour before the show's about to start. And I see him driving down the street really slow. Trolling for poke, for snow yeah. eggs. And like hatching eggs and trolling. stuff. I was trolling. Had some time to kill. Going about five it's, miles an hour. So my eggs hatch. Maybe that was actually the last time we had un controversial American That's unity. true. That's true. Because I just remember hanging out in LA because this, this was like before I moved up for university or maybe I was down on holiday break or something. Yeah. But I just remember like there was a park um, near the Beverly Hills High School called um, Roxbury Park and it's big and largely uninteresting and no one's ever there. And I was there at like 6 p.m. near the sunset or or maybe even like 8 p.m. because it was it was summer. Um, He's and it was it's fucking a fan of sexy full. Goth bad boys. Have a nice show, sweet boy. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, I, I love sexy goth bad boys. Um, as a matter of fact, yeah, but it was full. The whole park was yeah. like full, like actually full. Like there were 
hundreds of people moving along the little pathways in the park, like, and people were stopping to talk to each other at lights, or you'd hear like a shout of someone going, like, ah, over here, there's a Pokemon. Man, that was like, that was so cute. That was really nice. It was, at, we would still have world peace to this day if the game was about two years in advance, but it took like two years to get to a real playable game. It's two things that ruined Pokemon Go. It was the servers were shit right off the bat. The gameplay wasn't that great. But also, when fucking Hill Dog said Pokemon Go to the polls, she made it so uncool. She did. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty much yeah, that pretty much fucking killed it. Um Yeah, fuck. I wonder how I wonder if you could ever like I don't know, man. I feel like the problem is humans should be walking around and talking to each other on their own, and you kind of have to gamify it to make people do yeah. it in large numbers now. Wasn't there going to be like a Pikmin ARPG game or like alternate reality phone game? Isn't that a thing? Hold on. Did my fucking cat. Oh, no, oh, no, problem. no problem. There probably is like a Pikmin ARG. They, they've had so the many. Cat. They had so many replications <laughs> trying to get it, but nothing took on like Pokemon Go did. This cat. That's a little. Yeah, they they tried uh, they tried to do a Harry Potter Pokemon right. Go style game, but it's already gone. They already it's already uh, they already took it off the App Store and everything. Little smush. <laughs> little smush smush. Some people think holding your cat like that is wrong. Will this be what finally okay, gets you canceled? I'm back. Sorry. Yeah, they uh, they tried to do a Harry Potter branded version of Pokemon Go. It's called Wizards Unite, and it only lasted a few yeah. years. It's already gone. Which, funnily enough, nobody tried to cancel people for playing that. Yeah. Because it was like nobody really gave a shit about that. That was like three years ago. Um, like If it's anything like Pokemon really Go, people will forget then. about it. Yeah. I think I, I think things hadn't really like heated up as much back then. I don't know, man. I just I just feel there has to be a way to do that shit. Like we're talking Christmas armistice shit, okay? We're talking like I want I want um fucking uh Afghan fighters and Taliban warriors palling up because there's like a Charizard there, you know. I want people need to get along over the shit. What could you do? Because Pokemon's such a big property. What could even match that? Well, I think if this AI thing picks up we can just have the AI figure out the best way for people who are battling to get along. We have to ask the AI, though, because humans won't figure this out. Only chat GPT. The only thing I can think of that's even like close enough would be like Mario or something. I, I, don't, I don't know. What else? What if uh, it was like a Tinder thing, like a, like a weird sexual thing where there's just like a, a sub slut in every area that's like, use my mouth, you use my whole friendship, peace. You know, you could you could take the Mario thing a step further and be like, you know, like a Smash Bros kind of augmented reality with all of those Nintendo properties, like Samus and Link and all of them. Did, did either of you ever do the, the, the Nintendo DS like multiplayer crosslink thing where you'd be near someone else the ds and you could play multiplayer games just like off of local wi-fi or whatever i think i did at a pax convention one year it yeah i've never had probably a around 2009 i vaguely remember doing it because i was waiting in line so i don't think it was that fun to me because i was waiting in line i did not get the most out of it I um I never actually tried it, but I feel like in concept something like that could be super fucking cool. How cool would it be to play like a quick multiplayer game? And it's like, oh yeah, the person you just played a game with, they're actually like pretty close. Do you want to like chat them? Oh hi, and then you could call them like a retard, or you could be <laughs> like, you know, hi, that was so cool. Do you want to get some coffee? And then you kill them when you meet them. That's but, the, that's ooh, the problem, cool. right? That's the that's the problem. Is there's gonna be these weird creeps that ruin it. Well, you remember when people were getting mugged playing Pokemon Go? Like, people would yeah. hang out near the gym or whatever and jump people? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's fun. Yeah, I, I was doing that. That was my that was my. <laughs> That's an added design. element of surprise in gameplay. I just don't want to... I just don't want to have, like, I'm out there playing and uh, someone tries to molester me. I don't need that Pog, in my life. IRL, random encounters? Oh, my God. Dude, this game has so much content as I'm getting my jaw, like, fucking pasted against the curbside <laughs> we got to bring back pogs 
Uh, oh my god! Can we get a, a? That was like the '90s game. Can we find a way to digitize Pogs? No. And you go up with your phone and you like have your stupid. Uh, what do they you call those NFT? It? Like NFTs, but they're Pogs now, and you can lose you your stupid. You can lose your stupid NFTs with your little Pog app. You're like flip, flip, smack, smack, bitch. Get, get mugged, and I'm like, ah, microtransactions. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Yeah. Um, I have there... no idea what the fuck you mean by by pogs. By the way, pogs oh, yeah. were this trend in the nineties that that kids played. They were like these little cardboard discs, and they were supposedly collectible. And you had these big, thick discs called slammers, and you'd throw them down on top of the stack of pogs. And the ones that flipped over were the ones you got to keep, and you would just keep playing back and forth. They like were basically that, right? analog well, NFTs. Yeah, it was kids, like kids... Bay- Beyblade. Uh, even more simple than that, they're like these little, f- they're flat discs that you just smack with another flat disc, and you whoever flips over the discs keeps them. It was like kid yeah, gambling. Yeah, this sounds like unimaginably boring. This sounds like a, st- this sounds like right here. somebody took the worst poverty story from the Great Depression and the worst poverty story from the Soviet Union and mixed them together. Like, um, I can, we, I can you, write, you, we take two bits of cardboard, sir. And we'd meet each other in the streets, and we'd jam them together a bit and see which one flipped up first. I could write a one... script. I could write a script right now that could go to Hollywood about when I was a kid playing Pogs. I was fucking... We didn't play Pogs that long. We went straight to Slammers. I was stacking tubes of Slammers. They're all, all worth like 2 to $10 a piece, and I had like 300 of them in a, in a tube. I would go sell them to kids because they wanted to buy my Slammers. I'd have cash all the time. I, I traded uh, this kid who was on this like Saved by the Bell ripoff show that went to my high, uh, elementary school. I traded him a stack of slammers for my first Game Boy. I was like fucking around. I was I was running shit off these pogs. It was like little kid gambling. It was it was as it sounds basic, right? But you have to remember this is before we had any real video games. This is, I, Tetris on this Game Boy was like the the future, and Tetris is a bit. It's nothing. You look yeah, now. It's, it's- it's, a, it's it's really about the social dynamic, right? Like, it's not actually the flip tricks. It's actually like the 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 brutal crushing despair that yeah. the the like Filipino orphan feels as you take away their lunch money yes. because they their cardboard discs yes. didn't flip right. You're fucking over all those kids, and like if 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 those kids are, might beat you, you take out your like cut slammer that's like cheaty, and you just hit it right so. You don't win, but you destroy their pile. You tear it up with your little buzzsaw slammer. Like it was, it was gross. I was a sicko. I was a bully with these pogs. I'm trying to think if there was any equivalent to like play playground, like schoolyard games that I would play. I don't think there was because I know that around the time I would have been in that age group, Beyblade was the thing. But I never yeah. once saw anyone do Beyblade, so I, I don't actually—I I never actually saw that. Um, I know people played Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, but I also didn't see much of that. I don't really know. Yeah, I, I think that this probably, like, our parents would have played marbles the way marbles, we played yeah. Pogs, and then everything got corporate after that. Like, the Pogs wasn't exactly corporate. Marbles weren't exactly corporate. Everything else had to be branded, had to be a Beyblade, had to be a Pokemon, had to be sold to you with a character on it. Yeah, well, the the I remember how, like, fucked the Pokemon card market thing was as well. Because with Yu-Gi-Oh! It got, so, with Yu-Gi-Oh! I always felt like I never played much Yu-Gi-Oh! card game shit, but I felt like when people got the cards, it was because they wanted to play the game. But the Pokemon card stuff was like this universal hegemonic cultural force that nobody could avoid everyone had pokemon cards nobody played the pokemon card game they just cards just materialized in your possession and people cared about it like it was Hmm. very weird i wonder if there were any dilbert pogs back in the 90s when did dilbert pop off uh in the in the 90s like early 90s because pogs Uh, were kind of out of the 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 cool zone around 93 dilbert was popular like relatively early i think they might have been there might have been you know yeah yeah i was i I was hoping we were gonna get jeff holiday on today because i wanted to hear yeah we i i tried i don't know what he's doing now i think he was busy but i was gonna have him on because he was arguing 
on Twitter with Doug Tenaple, you know, the Earthworm Jim guy that you argued with yeah. one time. They were going back and forth because Doug feels a kinship with the Dilbert guy because <laughs> he's also a, a cartoonist that got canceled for his beliefs. So, okay. <laughs> the, but at, like the, the cra- OK, so first of all, Doug Tenaple is fucking insane. Um, <laughs> full on like full on like, um, oh, the Jan 6 Capitol riot was done by Antifa, except yeah. it was also our guys. But when we did it, it was good. But also Antifa did it. <laughs> Antifa but ruined Scott it. Adam- yeah, Antifa ruined it for the rest of us, man. <laughs> but Scott Adams literally just did like a two-minute rant on on ethno nationalism. It was literally like white people stop interacting with black people. Black people are a hate group. Fucking insane. Do you like, think do you think his ex wife is banging a black guy and that's why he's doing that? Have you seen what his ex wife looks so. like? So no. His ex wife is like an Instagram model and she's she's like thirty years younger than him. Uh, oh shit! Wait, hold on. I would like Sh- to think Shelly Miles. No, no, no. The other Bingham, one. I think her uh, name is. It's like Christian Basher. Um, Something. Hold on. If Christian, if he's hold only on, gone Basher. racist on, because his name? ex left him for a black guy, that's even more pathetic. I would like to think Scott he's always Adams. just been racist, but too busy having sex with this. Uh, sugar baby of his to okay to, i'm i'm seeing it now and i'm looking at a picture of of scott adams and his ex-wife together and i'm noting a slight age gap between them it's like 30 small, years uh, just a, a minor wow she's um <laughs> she's uh she's beautiful man yeah. i hope she took him to the cleaners in the divorce yeah there's uh yeah right there yeah that's crazy <laughs> That's what. Wait, how, is she like? Is she like twenty? She looks really young. There are like no wrinkles on her face. She's like, thir- um, I think she's like in her early thirties now. But they've been together for a how while. How old are her boobs? I mean, he probably paid for them. Um, but those could be those could be natural. They're not like ridiculously big. I, I don't, don't think they're natural, but they look great. So um, <laughs> I don't care either way. I, no, I don't. I don't fucking care. Yeah. Um, I just need you, to get with you, her so he'll start down talking fat people next. Have you felt? Um, like modern fake tits because yeah. I've had I've yeah I've felt both like the older ones that had like the gel packet thing and then the newer one where it's they put they like inject magic into you or something and like holy shit they it's basically not possible to tell almost anymore w- with breast implants I don't know how it goes with the sensation of the nipples I've been able to tell when I'm playing with the nipples in my mouth and their <laughs> fake breasts, the sensational reaction to the fake breasts is not on par with the naturals, but that's a her problem, not me. I'll still nibble thy nipple either way. So 31-year age gap between the two of them. Whew. Yeah. 31 like, um, year age because he's like in his 60s so fuck it if i was i'd be racist too if i lost that i'm wondering <laughs> if she's banging a black dude and that's no, why I, I doubt that's it i think he's okay. always okay. been this fucking they got divorced much back of an idiot. during the summer guys 60 something he's he's been thinking this for a while um Oh, wait, hold on. A pe- wait, just insensitivity warning. Apparently, the ex-wife we're all drooling over here um, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. So, you know, however things end up going, there's there's more to the, the tit story than we were previously Aww. The wife did? Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, I hope she has all his money to combat this. Same. Look, I- also, I wanted to say, by the way, just to, like, even things out, and, you know, maybe, maybe I'll take a little bit of heat for this. I actually don't think that Scott Adams looks bad for, like, a 65 year old white guy i actually think he looks like fine given that, sure right? if, if, um, if you have that much money from drawing cartoons complaining about nine to five job you shouldn't look bad you shouldn't look bad at all you probably never had to write one stressful funny joke the entire time you were just like it's Geez. literally it's his the entire dilbert thing was just it, the target audience was people who worked in offices you know that's all these shitty glasses, man. That's so, the problem. These ev- are so out of fashion. Everything he wrote about could have been covered with Garfield's I Hate Mondays. Kind of. Fuck that. I, I liked <laughs> Dilbert. You, you was, really each, like char- Dilbert? each character in Dilbert represented an archetype of the office space. I have no like, idea. I never I never read any Dilbert. I, I don't know anything about it. What was what was your introduction to Dilbert that you enjoyed? Um, 
my my parents have a couple of like bound volumes of Dilbert that they got like a billion years ago back at my place. And when I was younger, I read them and I've even read them like semi recently, like within the past five years. Hmm. And I feel like for a time, Dilbert was kind of funny. It, it always had this like libertarian tech bro attitude of like the workplace is dumb but it would be fine if only a really smart guy like me was in charge of it all i think there was there was <laughs> there's was, there wasn't much of like an underlying sympathy or like a structural critique it was more like you know um this is all really dumb but like <laughs> Mm, somebody needs to sort it out kind of like an underlying authoritarianism to it kind of like how scott adams thought he had solved race issues in america just move <laughs> his, away from them in his little fucking conversation did he not <laughs> did, it, did it not work are we aren't we aren't we unified right now in in canceling him maybe I'm not he's even like sure. the sacrificial lamb. i'm guessing that I, I, apparently that poll that he referenced the the statistics on it were like less than 200 black people even responded 130 to. 130 black people responded to a yeah. poll that polled a thousand people 13 percent of the poll was black people 26 percent of the black people polled said that white people uh it's not okay to be white 21 percent said that they don't know if it's okay to be white and and 53% well, the, said it's okay to be white, right? The the poll was on how they felt about the statement. And it's okay to be white was literally like a, like a 4chan dog whistle thing where like, they, like, like neo-Nazis on YouTube would say like, it's okay to be white. And what they mean by that is like, you know, the Holocaust didn't happen or whatever. So I, I think like the problem here is that like it's innately coded, right? K kind of like how like in a vacuum, white pride doesn't mean anything wrong. But in reality, every white pride event is like a bunch of Nazis chest bumping and pissing on each other what was it was it 4chan just trying to get the most like basic statement the most agreeable statement and make the left angry about it get well, worked like up the, over all, it it's, it's like the all lives matter thing right because yeah. like like semantically all lives matter is completely inoffensive but it's a response to the phrase black lives matter and the implication of responding to black lives matter with all lives matter is the idea of like okay you know, sure, Black Lives Matter, but like, aren't we all Tomorrow going March, through issues? And it's like I implicitly. Junk. Oh. You guys were hey. all I listened to during the withdrawals, so you deserve oh, a cut right. of the money I've saved. Thank you. Oh, for I being thank you. you. Anyone out Glad there doing better. you are worth the effort to quit? Yeah, congratulations wow. on quitting. I do think that if this has been that long, you owe us a little more than 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> no seriously yeah. congratulations that's congratulations. fucking awesome i lost a lot of family members who didn't make it out and uh it's it's tough i'm glad you're not there with them yeah so just just to, just to finish my point yeah it would be like if you asked me like well how do you feel about white pride and like my answer is what do you mean right like how do i feel about white people being proud of themselves well that's fine how do i feel about like any of the innumerable ethnic pride movements of white people like italians irish poles that's all fine but like in reality google white pride see which sites and which messaging boards and which youtubers come up and it's like okay well obviously something else was meant here you know there's 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 a there's a part of me that needs to figure out how we can have it's okay to be white work because i saw a video of the black hebrew israelites and they had these two fucking white people licking all their boots they're like, yeah, these white people know what the and like, the, the, I, I assume these white people were I doing mean, that's it out of just like Kanye. He was saying black Hebrew Israelite propaganda. And white I, people I were assume licking they were boots. licking these boots out of some sort of guilt. And I'm like, I'm like, this is weird to me. Like, maybe maybe you're a sub slut and you just love licking boots. I'm fine True. with that. Yeah, it's a it's I'm a fine with thing. That. Why shame? If it's a kink thing, I'm fine with that. But if you really, if there's people out there that believe that they have to lick someone's fucking boot because of. 200 years of uh, systemic oppression. I feel like we're, we're miss we are losing some people here. Maybe yeah, I'm wrong. Well, I, so, so the black black Hebrew Israelites are literally just black Nazis. So that they're they're on their own shit right now. Um, there are probably there are some like super white guilt filled white people, and they're fucking hilarious. Um, and I hate them, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. I we're we're talking minorities, minority. Those you know, were the, the average black person will roll their eyes if a white person is being like weirdly apologetic around them right like if you're white yeah. and you go up to a black person and be like man white people sure are bad huh? i'm so sorry about the <laughs> years of oppression that's like, the fucking black weird too we have to have this conversation those were the people who were following yeah. gazi kozo you remember gazi that's Kozo's? weird yeah, yeah, yeah. that's weird he had a whole group of white people that worshiped the ground he walked on 
Uh, and he would have them in his videos all the time. I think it's a fucking kink thing, most. I legitimately fully believe that. Like, if it's a kink thing, I'm okay with that. It's super common on Pornhub. It's really popular. If they were um, just a weird sub couple that were like, fuck yeah, we'll lick these guys' boots. Let's do it. This is. Then they went oh. out in the bushes afterwards and ran each other out. Fuck it. Wait, there, wait, there was a. There, there was a. Um, there, there was a uh, um, fuck. What's his name? Not Andrew Tate. Andrew Callahan. The guy was also canceled. <laughs> there was an Andrew Callahan Channel Five video about the um, Black Hebrew Israelite, like Gazi Kodso kind of faction, the Black Hammer Crew or whatever. Yeah. And they were doing a fundraiser, which was like totally a scam. It was totally disingenuous. But helping with it was this one white woman. I think she was wearing a shirt that had like a stencil of Africa, the continent, on it. And they interviewed her, and she was the most like head empty holy shit i want to get gang banged by 12 black dudes with fat cocks like looking <laughs> white girl i've ever seen in my life it's like her f whole fucking purpose in life was to act as a magnet for that scenario it was insane it was very funny i respect her yeah mm. if, if, I'm, if ram that's, I'm rambling if that's <laughs> no what, no no if that's what drives you i'm glad you got to your destination yeah live your dream i just feel bad for people who are just confused because so many people are stupid already. And when you point somebody into the wrong direction, just because it suits you, even though it doesn't suit them, I feel like that's kind of mean, kind of fucked up. I, I, I think it's pretty fucked, yeah. I think it leads it leads the discourse in a really bad direction. It's like PSYOP shit, right? Because yeah. there's nothing like a neo-Nazi loves more than being able to point to something to support the narrative that modern white people are being cucked out to like a pro-black establishment, yeah. which is totally not fucking happening. But like, if you can point to one video, they can they can outrage farm that shit for years, which and they, they will. have. They will. We got yeah. Matt Walsh fucking spinning around in his uh, little Dilbert chair trying to find a reason to just spew anything like that. Just re re push it. All it's, these fucking kids. They all, they get one little morsel and they all feed off of it too for fucking weeks. It's well, that's weird. also a kink thing. It's Matt Walsh one hundred percent wants to be gang banged in a park by twelve black guys. That's that's um, the most Christ like thing well. about these uh, conservatives, in my opinion. It's how they can take a fucking loaf of bread and two fish and turn it into four weeks worth of content. It's sick. I feel shameless going over something twice in a row, man. I have no idea how they get away with it. <laughs> Jimmy Dore is really good at this, too. Like, he, I, he's he got, like, 50... I was about to say 57. That's low-balling it. He has more than 57 videos that are all basically the same, like, um, the squad, like, AOC and Ilhan Omar and shit, are bad because they didn't do Force the Vote two and a half years ago. And he's done that video over and over, and... I, it never stops getting views. Maybe I should be worse. I it need to get on seem, my worst grind. Side. Yeah, yeah. It, it, YouTube re like rewards the worse you are. The less empathetic you are to humanity, and the more uh, you care about taking advantage of the algorithm and people's fears, because that's what it feeds off of the negativity. The more, the more you'll do, that, the better you'll do. Yeah, it's you. Um, okay. There was a debate that I did a while ago with like this boomer guy who talked about how he had videos on his phone of black people beating up white people, random videos of street crime. And he would watch it from time to time because it would like remind him what was going on. And Scott Adams actually said the same thing in his post cancellation rant where he talked Only about um, you ask nicely, Billy. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank my you. God. I knew I could. I, I knew I could hit a junkie up for an extra 50. <laughs> Yeah, hey, milk it out a little more. <laughs> no, I seriously, uh, I'm very proud no of you. One want to address homeless in America, especially Vosh is very anti-homeless. Sadly, love the what? show. I don't know what I'm, an I'm anti me being homeless. It's true. I've, I've, <laughs> I've worked to prevent that from happening. Uh, oh, fuck, I keep I rant so much. It's, I'm, I'm very <laughs> I'm very bad about this. Just just like the um um some people will consume political content because it's like a hit of an emotion they're trying to maintain. And it's like smugness or entitlement or hatred or disgust or whatever. Uh, but man, that shit is so common. And I feel like it's kind of the only way to go if you want success long term, because that seems to be the most effective way of getting people back. Is it, this entertainment has to be served on some level of virtue these days, political virtue. They feel like that they're doing something righteous with their time by following the drivel that these half-cocked fucking idiots spew regurgitate for the views not for your information 
These the majority of these fucking people are just trying to feed their algorithm in their pocket. That's why I like I about you. Every, that, every yeah, way. every once in a while, you're just like say something that will probably get you canceled. Like you just I, like by the way, how about horse dick? And like what? <laughs> what? Well, nowadays, that's, that's not algorithm that's proof. Controversial. <laughs> yeah, true. Wait, you, wait, we literally went to the unicorn. We're, we're unicorn jizz was a drink together. Yes, okay, yes, I know yes. you're backing me on this. Yes. Yeah. My, um no it's it's just like it's it's um yeah i don't know man youtube sucks politics sucks i can't wait for politics to be done when is it gonna it's gonna be over like any year now right i never stop you know i i know jimmy Dore, and i i never saw this turn really coming like it, it was like around the it was like when when the covid stuff started he kind of flipped right I mean, um, he he went one way, and I think everybody else went another. It's, when when we it's been a little while since we've had him on our stream, but when he comes on, he doesn't even want to talk about that kind of stuff with us. He just talk wants, about butt play. Yeah, yeah, we talk about all kinds of like <laughs> anything, but yeah, we did talk about butt play. He he was like, oh, I'm just now getting into some kinky stuff. I was never a kinky person, and that's what he wanted to talk about, like like butt stuff. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good. Well, you're you're yeah. You know, that's the the mark of a good journalist. You're able to get people to talk about the stuff they um they won't otherwise open up about. Yeah. And when we had Kanye on, we got him to talk about <laughs> you know Kanye, which we I was missing that from Kanye. Oh. He yeah. started talking about everything but Kanye, and that's what he got off the rails. If you just keep Kanye talking about Kanye, he's fine. <laughs> Yeah, Kanye, or or you know, could, can you get him to talk about music? Is that possible anymore? <laughs> well, it would be or do you his think music. That's done. We, well, uh, well, sure, sure. He's we, made a lot of it. So. You know, I do. I, I kind of. We went to one of Jimmy Dore's comedy shows. He like comped us tickets to it, and we went to it one in Portland years ago, like three or four years ago. And I remember. Do you remember the guy that got kicked out? Because they yeah. were making fun of Elizabeth Warren, and some guy stood up like, why are you making fun of Elizabeth Warren, or something like that? It was, why are you going against our people and not the, the, the Trump? Why aren't you going against the right, and you're attacking the left? And the whole crowd just turned on this one guy. I feel like the guy might have been a plant. Even. I don't know. It was, just like, it was set up very theatrically. To, to but it was also sort of Portland. Point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I um, always great I don't to know. see you. There's, there's like a really side note. Ben so, cool Mania was the greatest thing in the world. It was. Those Thank of you, you that didn't watch actual Mania last night missed out. Ben uh, had delivered, and Egghead also delivered in a very interesting way. Watch it. Back to the conversation <laughs> at hand, please. Oh no, not at all. Uh, just, <laughs> just that like. Um, there's a really fine balance to struck in that, like critiquing your own versus doing like the broader critique stuff. And you can always tell the, one of the biggest signs of a person like completely losing the plot is if they say like, okay, so I'm on this side of the aisle and because I want this side of the aisle to be the best it can be, I'm going to exclusively focus on critiquing it and I'm not ever going to critique like the other guys. And that's almost, oh, that's like 100% the clearest indication that we're like rapidly sliding away from the plot. We're launching ourselves off the cliff. The plot is miles away now. Ask Vush Very dangerous feels stuff. about Wendy's. Is he pro oh. or anti-Baconator? Does Vush support chocolate Frosties or dirty privileged vanilla Frosties? How does he feel about the hot drinks? We well, need to know. We'll have to probably get back to that because this is going to be a long fuck, conversation. I don't like fast food. Fast food is so fucking expensive these days. Oh, my no, God. Seriously. <laughs> go go order like like enough food to fill you up from Taco Bell, and it will legitimately cost more than an entree and a side at like a regular sit-down restaurant, and it will taste worse, too. It's, it's so true. expensive now. It's true. It is uh, fu fucking wild. It is creepy how much a Taco Bell meal matches up to like if you go to a... Just to sit down Taqueria, restaurant. Taqueria, like, yeah. you know, yeah, El Rinconcito or I something had a like ridiculous that. michelada yesterday with uh, shrimp in it. It was like 17 bucks for the michelada with shrimp in it, but it was huge. And it had like a bunch of shrimp. And then I had four tacos for like 14 bucks. I can't get a michelada at Taco Bell. But I guarantee you I would have spent comparable for a, a meal half as satisfying if I would have gone for the gusto. I remember like trying to get a meal off Carl's Jr. I'd rather recently. have Magic is playing Sonic again. All stream, boo, Vosh, boo. Oh, true. <laughs> Come on, hey, but yeah, you, I, I wish I could do. We got fifty dollars from the junkie. You owe us more than five to talk down on people. Okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, but going back to what we were saying before, I kind of I remember uh, Dave Rubin's trajectory that way. Like he was on Young Turks, and then it's like, well, now I'm going to criticize the left 
because I am on the left and I think it's, you know, regressive now or whatever. That was the word they were using at the time. And now he's he's kind of like mask off at this point. Yeah, the, the discourse is coalescing. And I just looked it up, by the way. OK, I'm seeing a primal Angus Thickburger combo from Carl's Jr. at guess the price for a single, albeit large burger combo from it's a, a thick, fast food joint. It's a thick burger combo 1269 1931. It's a real shame that there is a massive lack of self-awareness and critical thinking throughout the country. However, this one clearly lands on the heads of the Republicans. Remember reading the Republicans of Texas being anti-critical thinking. That is true. Critical thinking was never went over well in Texas. That's where most of the textbooks are printed in the country, by the way. <laughs> they have Texas instruments, and that's because they're all about the numbers. The uh, And that shit gets sent all over the country, too. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, no, unironically. Like, it literally, these, these textbooks will literally, like, collude with local um, lawmakers. And it'll be like, uh, you know, like, well, here's the exclusive deal and providing this, that, the other. And they will make special textbooks that have, like, different kinds of content depending on where it's located in, in like, line with the curriculum, which they have – they help to shape, of course, because obviously, like, it's pretty difficult to do a curriculum if the textbook doesn't include the content you're referring to. So, you will like, I'm pretty sure there are textbooks in the USA today that are still doing the lost cause shit where it's like the, the – North started the Civil War yep. because they were mad about states' rights or whatever. And that's like in the text, deliberately written by people who will, in other textbooks, write the correct version of history. They're knowingly lying. It's not just like random teachers. It's like a whole corporate superstructure. Yeah, it's been going on for a while, too. I remember the news stories about this 15 years ago. For I, I don't understand why the textbooks are... Mostly printed in Texas, Nobody but thinks critically uh, everyone has their stupid opinion, but at least here on the drunken peasants podcast It's funny Great job. and proletarian. Yeah, the big thing I do here on drunken peasants podcast is making sure my opinion is always dumber than the viewers So they feel smart. It's fan service to it, the fucking top in an era of widespread insecurity stuff like this is important <laughs> Yeah, the last time you were on, we were both unbelievably trashed. Uh, was that the last time? I think, yeah, that was the last time he was on. Um, it was we, we we had like six bottles of champagne. Yeah, <laughs> I think you confessed to like seven crimes or something. It was yeah, yeah, wild. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that pretty regularly. I because I don't care about uh, getting caught. Right, I feel like I can talk my way out of just about anything. I don't know. You if don't that's, care about. Yeah. cancel culture from the feds or from yeah. the local police you know if it's um, if it's uh, the harry potter haters or if it, i don't even like harry potter i i won't play the video game not out of fear of getting canceled i just i fear of being bad at it i'm not good at games uh but oh imagine being bad at the harry potter game too that's like right? an ego blow right there i get canceled it's, i can't get past level one it's one of those games that leads you through it it's more like like playing through just like a story you know, yeah, the, well, that would only make it work like, like you're in the you're in the like potions making classroom being taught by like Professor Gringle fuck, you know, and there's like hold these two buttons successively to do the potion. And he's like yeah. fucking it up over and over again, like this spilling shit everywhere. Bomb. The game's flashing like want to go down to easy story mode, you know, they have uh, an on, A, on B, they have an A, B and C and D button. But when they ask what gender the character is, they're only allowed to use A or B. It's <laughs> fucked up. It's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, every 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 like character customizer input is a text box or like a hex code or something, and the only binary option is the gender one, right? Everything else, you know, you 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 get to put in what you want. Um, you mean this motherfucker can be a wolf? He can be a wolf, but I I can't I can't have a uh, two parts. I can't I can't have two. I want two. I want a swing a dick and slap it right under my own pussy. That's what I want, Harry Potter. Cast yeah, that spell. It's a cyberpunk 2077 world, right? Like <laughs> Thank people, you. Are, people are equipping fat cocks in that game. Thank you. I'm going to walk in not like I'm riding a horse, but like I'm the horse to ride. Cyberpunk. <gasps> God, what a disaster that was. So much hype behind it's supposed that. supposed to be good now. Is it? I rem The last thing, anytime I think about, about cyberpunk now, 
I, I think back to this time on Twitter, Jeff Holiday was talking about how he was going to play cyberpunk and how cool it was going to be. And then that one girl, uh, Bad Bunny, do you remember her? She came out of nowhere and was like, you're transphobic yeah. for liking that game. And Jeff's like, fuck you. No, I'm not. I just want to play this game. And she just like kept going after him and going after him. It was so ridiculous. Yeah, bad. But well, ironically, actually, you are transphobic because you're dead naming her. She goes by Kira Chats now, oh, probably no. to distance herself from all the horrible shit that pops up if you Google Bad Bunny. Are you, but um, are you allowed yeah, to no. dead name people if they have a history? Like, can't they be held accountable at some point? Do you just get to change your name and be absolved of all your sins? Yeah, it's like uh, it's like being a born again Christian. You get baptized, and all the cringe shit you did before. This is why this is why the great uh, the great travesty with um, Chris Chan with Christina Chandler. It was it was it was never people bullying or harassing her. It was always she never got the do over that she was entitled to. That's fair. That's fair. Kind of fucked up, Tbh. Yeah, she never would have yeah. had sex with her own mom if we would have given her a second <laughs> chance. Literally, yeah. The, it, we we had a moment, and and we we made it worse. And it's will always be on the hook for that. It's so weird because Christine had just raised like four thousand dollars to go to this brony con that was going to be in downtown Bellevue, and we were going to go there and meet up with Christine sometime during that weekend and then i think a day or two before she was supposed to come out here all of a sudden the 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 leaked phone call where they admit to banging their mom comes out and it's like whoa um i guess we dodged a bullet there i don't know i like to think if i would have met up with christine in real life i could have smelled this the sex of mother on her and i wouldn't have wanted to hang out still in jail for almost two years too by the way uh still no actual court date or anything American years, justice system. Two years without access to their Legos. We used to have this porn star on our show uh, named Mercedes Carrera, and she's been in, in jail for like four years, and she's accused of molesting her own daughter, and that has not gone to court yet. And it's some serious shit. And I just like all you know. You hear the 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 charges, and they're terrible. And we we've been like at first we were like watching it like hawks because we're like we hope this isn't true, you know. Um, but now it's like, what's the holdup? You know, you have a right to a, a speedy trial. I think it's her so lawyer she, pushing yeah. it off. Yeah. If we yeah, can get it's, them. It's, it's insanely fun. It's one of the reasons why, um, everything goes to plea deals, right? Because, um, if you can't afford to post bail, you could wait in jail for like years and years and years with, with like nothing. Just even for something you might eventually end up getting acquitted of, in which case you get what comped a little bit for your for your prison time for years of your life. It's it's completely fucked. If we could get Mercedes Carrera and Christine Weston Chandler released into the same halfway house, can we put a webcam in there? I just want to watch. Uh, Onision is wait is Onision <laughs> in jail? No, no. Onision got oh, charged okay. or got a a federal He's getting lawsuit. Sued, not charged, but it's not just Onision. It's Onision, Onision, to give another, and YouTube in the same lawsuit file. So for Onision to lose, YouTube has to lose. Interesting. All right. It's, well, I guess. Um, Immovable force, unstoppable object. Uh, or wait, immovable force, unstoppable force, immovable object. Yeah, we'll we'll see how that one works out. And the person um, no filing the wins, lawsuit never actually met them in real life. So what what they're doing is they're they're claiming they were groomed uh, remotely, and that which, YouTube facilitated that by allowing Onision, which on their is platform. possible. I've done it before. <laughs> Another crime admitted to. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just enough. Well, that seems like kind of a bullshit lawsuit, though, right? You can't hold a platform accountable for the behavior of people on that platform. This is like classic Section 230 stuff. It seems it seems like it's going to have to it's 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 going to be a set a different precedent if somehow the the lawsuit goes through. Billy used to collab with Onision all the time, so there's like he's collab, a also guilty. <laughs> also, <laughs> um, well, the Section 230 stuff might actually get changed i'm pretty sure the supreme court's going to be looking at it soon yeah so yeah that might like end youtube basically we'll see i guess well that's probably better for youtube right they can just have their deals directly with jimmy fallon <laughs> well yeah no youtube would essentially just be like a netflix and they would only let people on the platform if they had pre-existing deals and contracts and if they fully vetted every single word that was going to be put out there and that would be it you know there'd be no such thing as independent content 
I think that's, that's what they wild. want. That's a horrible thing for us to have this technology where we could talk live and then to have that stunted just because they've been stunting it slowly ever since I started making videos on this platform, you know, and it's been like ten years now. So it's it, it, everything. Almost none of the changes they make are positive. It's always a change for the worse. Like, I feel bad for you guys. I'll be fine. I can just date Chelsea Handler and get a career. But you guys are going to suffer the most. Yeah, well, you know, it, it keeps us uh, it keeps us young, trying to stay ahead of the curve there. I don't know. I, I, it's like it's the problem is that social media has never really been like a stable economic model. Um Stuff like Netflix and streaming services make sense on their own because you pay a subscription fee. But if something's totally free, like YouTube, the ad revenue doesn't usually cover it. But server costs are so high. And then there's the question of like legal liability. And then there's also stuff like with Alex Jones or whatever, right? Like an unbelievable amount of social harm can be done by some types of people being popular. And I'm not some fake free speech cuck or whatever. If I had two roads to walk down, one in which a guy's YouTube channel gets banned and one in which like he doesn't and he ends up like leading the Fourth Reich or whatever, um, yeah, ban that shit. I don't fucking care. Yeah, uh, you know, free speech is, uh, is, is kind of like self-protected necessarily if your free speech leads to free speech being taken away because you're promoting ultra-authoritarian far-right values, then it's self-defeating. But like, man, <laughs> what? Like, what's the stable model? What do we get? Or do we, we all just break up and go back to, like, micro-niche forums? Is it really even possible to have a grassroots furor, though? Like, <laughs> I, Well, I, it, it promotes the sentiment, right? It's not, you don't do grassroots furor shit, but it's like, um, I mean, Alex Jones kind of is, right? Like, he's hugely influential, and he got there basically through independent content creation. Even if he doesn't become the Fuhrer, maybe he's he, he's making the world more Fuhrer-esque. Yeah, I mean, he even started out on the precursor to internet content creation. He did public access for years, which is what you did back in the day before stream. That those got, those people were like the first streamers in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, they were weirdos. And they were so cute back then. I I loved watching it. Uh, it's it was very entertaining. Yeah, I, I grew. I up guess on here it. in Seattle, they used to play porn and get away with it. Yeah, we I had no idea. How we they had a guy named that. Mike Hunt. <laughs> and he would come on and he nice, would just play nice. like copywritten porn all night long. It's so weird. There's another guy, his name was TJ Williamson, and he would come on and he would he would like pregnant porn. He'd just play pregnant porn all night long. But also Alex Jones was also nationally syndicated on AM and FM radio stations all over the country too. That's another yeah, crazy he was thing. He was really big. It's pretty, I mean, I feel like if you're a conservative, though he wasn't originally, but if you are, I feel like it's pretty easy to get those um those those radio licenses uh because there's like a lot of them are kind of like collectively owned and managed by um by like these bigger firms that are always looking for new talent right yeah yeah and especially yeah. On, on on the conservative side yeah conservative there's radio huge, they're, they're keeping am radio alive you know <laughs> Yeah, because it's like boomer truckers out in the sticks. Because the people who actually listen to the radio are people in rural areas, first and foremost, right? Like, um, and those areas tend to be overwhelmingly red. So you like you you turn it on. It's all like Christian, you know, like gospel shit. And then you you get like a little. You turn the channel. It's like the next one's talking about how the liberal media is is ruining elephants because the the, the newest cartoon makes a woke elephant. It, there's, oh, yeah. It's inescapable. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, that that was pretty much the genre Rush Limbaugh pioneered. He uh and now there's like a bunch of Was clones. Imus pre Limbaugh or Imus wasn't as political as Limbaugh and I I, I wouldn't say he was as right wing as Limbaugh okay. either. Uh but I he, just remember Imus actually getting canceled. And I think Limbaugh that was got the to basketball fucking crack thing. his way through life. That was the thing he said about the basketball team. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, Rush Limbaugh got fired because they, for some reason, they hired him at ESPN to be like a sports commentator, and he made some kind of like racially insensitive joke and got fired. So I guess that's just par for the course. Yeah, well, I mean, we're still just barely in the timeline where Scott Adams loses Dilbert syndication for basically just going on a multi-minute ethno state rant I wonder, um, but i feel like we're getting pretty close to that not being the case anymore uh, 
I wonder if there's like a bunch of sicko racists that are going to start reading Dilbert now because <laughs> yes. of what he said. They're like, oh, it's time to get into this Dilbert. <laughs> like, reading for like <laughs> like based messaging in the text. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like the pe- it's like the people playing the Harry Potter game just because they know it pisses people off. Like those are those were like the really bad man. People in you this know scenario. what? If I if I was the all if right, if you're playing because you legitimately like Harry Potter, that's one thing. But it, because you hear it pisses people off to play it, and then you play it. If I was the all right, the I would make Dilbert the new Groiper, the new fucking the new Pepe. <laughs> they could Pepe, yeah. I'd make dude. him the new Pepe. <laughs> if I was the all right, I would go oh hard my right God. now. God, yes. Content to, to like build that off of. If I remember correctly, Dilbert's pretty fucking sexist. The one woman in the office, I think her name is Alice. But like half of the jokes associated with her is that she's like a like a bitchy. Like ba- basically, the if they if they could mention like being on her period in the Saturday morning cartoon comic, then that would be the thing. She's the woman who's always acting like she's PMSing, um, and that's like all the jokes around her. I also remember there was like a series of jokes. Where there was like a new lady who was brought into their department and her bit was that she would always hyperactively interpret all behavior around her as being sexist. Like, <laughs> like it, Dilbert said there was an acute problem, like, like as in the opposite of obtuse. And she's like, acute, you're calling me cute. I'll have you arrested, blah, blah. It was pretty unfunny, like distinctly unfunny. It's, comic. it's funny. I'm- it's funny to me because this is exactly what I would expect Scott Adams to write after only finding out about him through this shit. I, I don't know nothing about a Dilbert. I, I don't. Were there any black characters in Dilbert? Did you wait? Did you see? Go, okay, Google right now. Dilbert first black character. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Oh God. It's, it's okay. gonna be like a minstrel show character or something. No, no, no. It's plot, no please. It's, it's next week's episode of Dilbert, and Dilbert's just moving away from it. Oh my God. Moving right. cubicles. Hold on. Is it? Is it this guy? That's the digital release, but it got printed in black and white, which is the second image. If you'd like to pull that one up, this one. The first black character in a like thirty years running strip. Let's go, Dave. I support your right to identify any way you want, but I'm trying to reach my diversity targets, and it isn't helping me that you identify as white. Maybe oh you could identify God. as black and solve your own problem. Oh, that's how I paid for college. It, it's literally they bring in a black character, and it's literally the um, like, haha. Well, he identifies as white. You identifies, but nothing means anything. Bah. But it all printed in black and white without <sighs> midtones, so everyone looks white or non-racial. Oh wow, racist Vosh! You do not see that guy's hair. Those are obvious. Uh... No, he's bald. Those are African American. Uh, b- b- d- 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 I can't. I can't even fucking rip. No, this that one. guy's white. He's just got. <laughs> he's just got powerful um, side fro energy. Wait, which one's the white guy? Which one's the black guy? I thought the black guy was the guy on the left, but I guess we're proving the a point. Shit. <laughs> no, the black. The black guy is the guy on the left, and the boss is the guy on the. Right. It's just they. They brought in their first black character, and the whole thing was a joke about like, haha, he identifies white. Um, here. Um, I think. <sighs> wait, if you. If you go back to the image search, I think this is like the second, um, the second comic release of that fucking thing. I think it's it's the um, fourth one. There, the one that has the Twitter um, thing around it. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's the that's the first one. There we go. Okay. I mean, same basic joke, but like, yeah. But it's, it's like too fucking funny. It's like a they're having they're in the conference room together. There's a whole bunch. They have a whole audience this time. Yeah, I identify as white. You're ruining everything, Dave. Yeah, first first black character. We got him. Well, I I personally want to apologize to all uh, African American members of Dilbert comic book strip for my comments. I did not realize I was misattributing your racial tones in the two tone strip, and I will do my best to do better if I'm not canceled. This reminds me a little bit of the race discourse in a uh, fucking homestuck how much do you both know about homestuck i don't know anything about homestuck okay that's probably for the best it captured the minds and hearts of a very specific group of people um and it still holds them to this there day there once was a streamer but, named oh. vosh whose debates often ended in wash he'd argue and fight with all of his might but more often than not he'd get squashed well, thanks for the cringe bro. i liked it um the fuck was i saying 
Oh, all the characters in Homestuck are um, their skin just isn't toned in. You know, mm-hmm. um, they they just they're literally white, like the color white. And when people started doing like fan works and choosing how to skin tone them, there was a ton of discourse about that. People got really fucking mad. There were like death threats and shit um, about like, well, this person's actually white. This person's actually brown. You know, you can tell from this one, one text bit from this one passage in the 5,000th comic panel of this long running web anthology. Um, basically, race is dumb and shouldn't exist. In a world of cartoons, you shouldn't have race until they go to make the movie. Because you got it. You got to have race in movies. You got it. You got to have a character in the movie. You know what? Race swap. You know the DC. Make sure I'll be black. Yeah. You know the DC uh, comics character Shazam? Yeah. (laughs) Back in the, I'm thinking, 40s, he had a sidekick. Well, you don't have to go any further. Uh, sidekick in the 40s we know where this is going this was holy shit yep (laughs) wow his name was steamboat and look at look at how they they write his dialogue too i can't oh my fuck i want to say that out loud so bad i won't do it (laughs) i I I so badly want to do that oh my fucking god how, th- these are. This is actually the most lip I've ever seen on a racist caricature. It's the I've never seen more than this amount. That's cr- holy What's wild. Shit. Uh, His name is Steamboat. Did you see the credits on this too? The guy who inked this was a young Scott Adams. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and who's there in the margin of the of the uh, 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 you know? Uh, comic credits. It's, oh, Scott Adam. You know, go going back to like um like Civil War general photos from the Confederates. It's like, whoa, wait, who, I recognize those glasses. Hey, Scott <laughs> Adams. Man, I actually kind of feel like by the like that had to have been considered pretty bad for the forties, right? Because comics have always been kind of a little more progressive than general discourse. And I feel like by the forties that would have been seen as kind of silly. Am I off on that? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's uh I didn't even know about this until recently because I was a big comics fan and I liked this character, but I didn't realize uh, it says it came out in nineteen forty three is when the character was introduced. You know, I don't know, you know, uh it is the forties. You know, like, uh, yeah, it's just so it's so much. It's so much. Yeah, uh, it is. You know, it's that post World War Two America. I I could see it mid World War Two. They they would have been, you know, our our boys, our GIs would have been off fighting Hitler at that moment. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. uh, (laughs) I don't know, because it lasted several issues. Um so I don't know. Okay, okay, wait, wait, hold on. Steamboat Bill, most commonly as Steamboat, was a fictional character appearing in American comics, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, protests from African Americans and other readers concerning Steamboat's racial stereotyping led to the character's disuse after 1945. It was so bad that it was taken off for being too racist in 45. That oh. is wild. Still lasted four years. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 Trump's presidency and the Civil War. Oh, it's yeah. the four year run of racism. You got about four years in you. All these young fucking uh, Kanye fans and Fuentes boppers. All these That's young. How long ins- my channel's been going? Uh-oh. They don't know. They only got four years, and you're wasting it. You're wasting your four years of racism. You're four and done. Does my channel end after the four years, or do I just get to be not racist for a while? Uh, yeah, you get to you can join like a VH1 reality show or something. By the way, the new <laughs> the new Shazam movie is coming out soon, and they haven't announced every character that's going to be in it. So you think, you know. <laughs> his name's Steamboat Bill. Yeah. Was that a play on yeah. Mickey Mouse with Steamboat Willie? I don't know. When did Steamboat Willie come out? In like the twenties? I thought it was thirty five or something. Okay, thirty three, the thirties. Hmm. Fucking like like real like Marvel movie tier like semi realistic 3D rendering where they bring his ridiculous lips to life, um, just <sighs> just 
confidently side by side with the other characters unaddressed in the context of the film. It would be actually kind of dope if they made it work though. <laughs> like like if if they if they did it just to just to subvert expectations and then like everybody agreed that was actually a perfect character to introduce and it had some nuance and discussion. That yeah, I, don't, should, I don't think they could pull it should, off. But how great should, would that should, be if they did? Shazam Shazam like um it like like does a fight and then he ends the fight and he kind of like stumbles down to the ground and kind of crashes into a food truck and knocks over um a guy who you don't see the face of and he turns around and his lips go from <laughs> nose to chin and then there's like a deep pause and then he opens his gigantic mouth and he's like Ah, oh, so sorry to have hit you there. My bad. Uh, how are you doing this fine day? And like, and and they they pull it off like, oh, actually, we're progressiving it. I that's what it goes beyond his chin. Jesus Christ! Looks like Look he's allergic this. to pineapple and just got done eating one. <laughs> you ever eat a pineapple that has a little too much acidity in it? No, fucking, I fucking hate the taste of pineapple. Makes my cum good, though, so I got to crack That's one true. off every once in a while. Makes my cum L good. Look at how good Shazam looks here, too. That's, this isn't like, like, it's a nice rendition of him. And then next to him is that fucking <laughs> yes. that thing. What the fuck? Very unflattering. <laughs> it's all levels of disappointment. There, the, <laughs> You see the sign floating in the water? It says Germany. That way. So, yeah, this is in, in the middle of the war. <laughs> Germany's that way. Yeah. And then condescending, about... condescending Shazam's like, attaboy, steamboat. <laughs> Swing a hammer towards Germany. <laughs> I guess the hammer, oh, I'm stupid. The hammer knocked the fucking bullet, bullet out. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, why the fuck does he have a hammer? I'm like, oh, I should look at yeah, the whole picture. The back not of just, it. So instead of using the a, racist part. Instead of using a giant gun, steamboat's hitting it so with a sledgehammer. So easy to pull one over on me. I thought this cover was stupid. And Shazam is so strong, he's just holding it. It's and still a little stupid. <laughs> I can still see problems with this cover now that we've settled the, the hammer swing issue. There are still some problems here. Attaboy, he Steamboat! And this is when they still called him Captain Marvel. They they lost the rights to use Captain Marvel uh, when Marvel locked that down. But they really lost the rights when the quartering and everybody else started sniffling about <laughs> Brie Larson. Oh, that's true. That's what I knew for a fact. Brie Larson was Captain Marvel. Uh, to be fair, it was always kind of confusing. Or, or, or. Yeah, the character predated it's a comic Marvel book. Comics. Who the fuck cares? Like, it predated Marvel Comics, so that's why it came out. And DC didn't even start it. It was, I think, like Fawcett Comics originally. DC uh, absorbed a bunch of other publishers in their early days. So a lot of their stuff. The, their intellectual properties were created by somebody else that they just acquired. Attaboy, Steamboat! Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I found an old Cracked article. Remember Cracked? Yes. Yeah. They they were, wow. I wonder they how were, many uh, viewers watching right oh now my lost, God. lost their virginity to a girl they met on the Cracked forums. One in the chat, if one of you's lost your virginity to a girl you met on the cracked forum. I'm I, I'm watching your stream and I, I see what you're what you're pulling up there. Yeah, it's pretty Whitewash Jones was his name. Whitewash um, Jones. Sorry, I uh, uh yeah okay. Um <laughs> um yeah, for me it was it was the Newgrounds forums. Okay, yeah. that was the actual battleground for the heart and soul of the bitches. It was it was the Newgrounds forums. No, if you're pulling Tang off Newgrounds, you probably you probably into some weird shit. The theme yeah. song for our show that we play at the beginning of every show I found on Newgrounds years ago, and I just like asked the the songwriter if I could use it, and he's like, "Yeah, you can use I'm it." Calling it right now. I I have a lot of inside information that I don't really pay attention to, so I don't know how severe it is. About two years from now, you're gonna have a crazy revelation of how much debauchery was going on in Newgrounds behind the scenes, how much real oh, fucked God, up oh, shit. Newgr New, okay, first of all, animators are fucking sexual degenerates. So, like, Flash animators doubly so, because they were working for it. Um, so, yeah, no, right off the bat, the groundwork is laid. Um, now, people absolutely psychotic, that website. But also, you know, in retrospect, kind of a humbling memory on, on like, the internet being a genuine place. I mean, like... Newgrounds being kind of just like an overgrown personal website for Tom Fulp, you know, like and and now it's all just like giant corporate structures and it's a lot less interesting. Yeah, they could never have FDA 
Uh, you know what I mean? Like that. That would. Do you remember FDA on Newgrounds? Uh, is that an acronym for something? Yeah. Fuck. Fuck that ass. They had a. It was a bunch of really bad, like, uh, very poorly uh -huh. animated music videos, um, about fucking that ass. Uh, I've I, I've almost certainly heard them. Vash, like, you're dressed in, like millions of years ago. You're dressed really well. You're dressed really well. I just oh I, th oh thank you. I, I want to say this because I, I have to ask now. Do you ever have a laundry day where you have to wear like your worst clothes? Well, I have so many like anime graphic tees that I don't really run out of those. But I mean, I do I do have to you know I will I will run up to zero pairs of clean underwear and like reuse yeah. one. Um, shamefully today is my laundry day and i'm wearing this shirt that was a uh, gifted to me uh, ben gave this to me from uh, one of our fans it's a little too small for me and and also on laundry day i'm wearing uh my worst pair of underwear and i should throw these away because this entire episode it feels like my balls are being pushed through a cheese grater i hate that it it's it's miserable you uh -huh. ever have the cheese grater bowls, or is that just, this is my dumbass problem? <laughs> Wait, am, am I gonna get banned for this? No. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember all of it. What? What is the year that came out? Probably like uh, 2000, 2000 nothing. 2001, something like that. Okay, God, God, people in my chat don't even know. They don't even fucking know. Um, also, I never have ball cheese grater issues because I, 50% um, of my YouTube wealth has gone towards making sure that I only ever wear micromodal me undies underwear, which yeah. are so much more comfortable than Do not they make those. them an extra, 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 extra fat? Like, can I get me undies? I'll Probably. buy, I'll Hold buy on. some we of did their campaign super fat. for them at one point. Nobody, nobody gifted me any me undies. I don't know if they'll I never fit got me. Any. I got all the Mac Weldon undies. We we had like the Mac Weldon sponsor. I'm not sure if they go up to my size. I need to get some new undies. No, they, though. no, they literally they have 4XL on the site. Yeah. I can maybe pull off 4XL. Um, they're super fucking comfy. Okay. I they're so worth it. Um, it's actually crazy how much comfier they are because because women those dumb bitches they get comfy underwear by default because panties are made up of like one eighth the material that boxers are so they're like okay we'll make them nicer they'll but be like i don't know man that's out of not fucking... that's not totally true because a lot of bras are like torture devices okay but yeah bras suck i'm sorry i'm thinking of panties yeah no bras yeah. are a whole fucking thing but you, you people you know you shouldn't cheap out on, on bras either you want and you, you want those I, I don't know if this is a problem for most women but the ones i've ever been with they're always so fucking soaked their panties are all so soaked that they have issues with the soaked they were, panties because they were peeing a lot well that's, i hope that's why otherwise they're <laughs> yeah. icky well, yeah why are they why are they peeing so much why, why, are they doing why are you always so covered in piss around me, woman? You're just dripping. <laughs> Plug it up. Plug the it fuck up, is woman. What's wrong with you? Icky. There's <laughs> mucus down there. Icky. <laughs> Icky. Uh, it's true. Um, it's, it's very true. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> you should check out MeUndies, though. It's super comfy. Ben Shapiro's doctor wife says you have a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, we sometimes we do these things for our Patreon. Uh, it, we call it Who's Worse? We put two people head-to-head -head against each other, and we create five factors to measure who's worse between the two of them. And, w and one of the ones we did recently was uh, Ben Shapiro and who was the other guy? Uh. Did Steven Crowder. Yeah. Those two. Like, who's worse between the two? And I think Steven Crowder won. He did win. Ben I think Crowder's worse by far. Yeah. yeah. Ben, Ben's like, if you watch um, Ben's show, not just the little YouTube segments that he puts out, but ones where he actually, like, does something live or not scripted, um, Ben is actually a human being. It's kind of crazy because if you take a look at, like, Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles, Candace Owens, Steven Crowder, they're they're all lizard people. They're fu They're disgusting. But Ben actually will, like, make jokes and kind of smile warmly sometimes. Or, or he'll, like, you know, act uh, with some kind of sincere desire as opposed to being just an empty vessel for hate. Uh, he's unique in that respect. And I never thought I would like him compared to anything. But compared to his contemporaries. Black Bomber, it's a white guy that turns black 
back when he yells black power. Oh, fuck. Huh. Yeah, I, I agree shit, with you. Yes. I agree with you there, though. It, it, one weird thing, though, that the two had in common is that they were both kind of in show business as a kid. Yeah, but Ben Shapiro was, a, was a child a, prodigy. He was a violinist. Uh, Stephen Crowder was a fucking cartoon kid yeah and then he was in some really bad like yeah, american crowder, crowder pie was type always, movies crowder was always a try hard dork ben shapiro was actually kind of running shit when he was a kid he obviously had one of those dads that he like didn't want to displease so there's issues that come out from there which is why he's his voice is up in his nose and he talks about his doctor wife's dry vagina all the time it's, it's he's got he's he's broken he's br he was so productive as a child that it broke him because he was just trying to <laughs> live up to his fucking father. I'm sorry. I looked up the Black Bomber thing. So he, he's like a white guy, and then he says Black Power, and then he turns into a black guy? Yeah, he's like this huge kingpin-looking mo white motherfucker. He's, <laughs> dude, what's weird is this isn't like an old comic. It's a new comic. It's clearly like relatively new. There's a black woman. And she's like, fuck you. And he's like, huh, well, wait, wait until you see my, my power. And then he turns into a black guy with a giant fucking afro. <laughs> and she doesn't seem impressed. Oh, I see it. This I is see actually it. very funny. So he turns from a fat white guy into like a a, a stacked yeah, a black guy with an oh, afro? because all the fat on him turns into melanin. That's where like the material <laughs> goes. <laughs> All the masses, it turns into hair and melanin, and and also that gold chain, which I guess he he kept the hoodie, and the shirt, <laughs> presumably the pants, but the gold chain was manifested. It's all the he... fillings in his teeth when he's white that come <laughs> together. What's so he goes he goes hold on hold on lady black power and he goes what's happening baby meet the brown bomber. I only have my powers when I turn black, or should I say African-American. Anyway, they only last for one hour. I call it CPT. Who the fuck wrote this? Who, who, who released this? If, if this had topped the charts, um, the racial divide in America would have been healed. This right here could have fixed everything. I call it CPT. Are you fucking well, you serious? Ha you have to assume that not naturally, but entirely forced, he is now putting on the most exaggerated, like, AAVE voice he possibly can. Um, you know, he's, like, giving it his all, and it sounds awful. What's best is, like, this comic book has to write the fact that he's out there saving the day, he's got to, like, 59 minutes into his uh, colored people time, and... And it, it goes away, and he turns into like a fat white guy in the middle of the hood where he needed his pass. And now he's got to like fight his way out as a, a dumpy he's, chubster. He's mid, he just started the soft A, and then he flashes right? back to being a white right? guy, and he finishes it. <laughs> right? Like, you're done. You're done, dude. He is, part so of the funny. transition is his voice cracks, so it comes out the hard ER because... <laughs> Like what? <laughs> You're done. It's King so Kong's got nothing on you. <laughs> Training day ending done. It's over and it's not getting better. It's you're finished. People are saying Fuck, it's AI so art. Funny. It's not real. No, 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 no. That's that's got to be real. Uh, yeah, no. It's listed on on a, on a comics registry registry site. From oh. it's from um 2008. It was wait. This was a JLA comic? This was from Justice League of America was number it? 26. Are you, yeah. are you joking? God, no! I bed so I can get up at 3 a.m. for work, but I love you guys. Hey. Vashon DP is better than any drug, so come back soon. <laughs> yeah, you're on the hook now. <laughs> you're you're the oh, new co shit. you're the new hey, morphine. Likes me. <laughs> the 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 i the idea that this character looks like Kingpin and turns into a black guy is this a commentary on the Daredevil movie that came out when that when society got so angry about them turning Kingpin into a black guy for the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie? Who the fuck could have gotten mad at that casting though? Um, oh, it was uh, great. It's, it's um, he, Michael, he, Clark, Michael Duncan? Clark Duncan. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. He was perfect. Kingpin was Who one of my favorite characters as a kid because uh, I was a little fat, fat kid. So I love Kingpin. I was like, oh, he's the best. He runs everything. He's a big fat. And then when they cast Michael Clark Duncan, I was like, oh, this is actually dope. And then that's the first time I think people started getting angry about uh, 
people getting race cast no, differently? No, they got mad about Samuel L. Jackson too. In what? Uh, when he uh, because because uh, Nick Fury was a white guy. You're in the way comic. beyond the Daredevil casting. That, oh, really? That was, that was way. Later. Oh, you're talking about the Ben Affleck Daredevil. Yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. My bad. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, those. I, like, I thought you were talking about the Netflix one. I'm showing. I'm showing in my chat right now because I need chat to understand how large my, Michael Clark Duncan is. Just so, that, and just in case they they're not aware of this, the size of this of this unit of a man. Um, he was great for that role. Yeah. I've always loved Kingpin. Everyone loved him yeah. in um, in in uh, Into the Spider Verse. Everyone loved him in the movie, yeah. and um, I loved him in the comics. The the Daredevil. I don't know if it was called like Daredevil Year One. The stuff that um the stuff that um Frank Miller wrote yeah. um back in the day of of Daredevil when when he's just starting out and he he gets the shit kicked out of him and like all of his ribs broken by Kingpin. I fucking love Kingpin as a character, man. He's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and Michael was great as well. Sorry. Yeah, he was fantastic. That I I'm mad that people hate that Daredevil movie so much because it it fucking hit in a lot of ways. That fight scene at the end where he's fighting Michael Clark Duncan and he he's like the, the water starts coming down and Daredevil gets in his zone and he just fucking kicks Michael Clark Duncan's knees out. I oh, that was so raw. So fucking raw. Spoilers. Yeah, no, it's really there were there were a lot of really good parts of that movie and a lot of embarrassingly fucking bad parts of that movie and unfortunately yeah. they don't actually cancel out in retrospect. Are you a fan of the Sandman at all? Uh, the co oh yeah I, I I loved the comics when I was younger and I watched the Netflix show recently. I liked it a lot. Um, it it kind of sucks how they can't incorporate all of the other DC universe into it because the comics had a lot of crossover, but it I, I thought it was still good. The casting was pretty good. the The guy they got to play Morpheus was pretty dead on, I think. Yeah, and it's it was never like th this was like an incredibly <clears throat> hard adaptation to make. Too, we're not talking about like a layup here. Like we have to grade in a curve because the Sandman comics are so fucking weird that uh, the fact that we got any adaptation that wasn't like dog shit is a miracle in itself. Yeah, I'm I'm glad it got another season too. It got renewed for another season. And wait, it did? Yes. Season two. When when was that confirmed? A few months back. Oh, it was renewed on November second. Oh, okay. I just complete. I okay. I completely missed that. I'm dumb. Sorry. Oh yeah. It's uh. I'm I'm excited for it because there there's so much. We, they we haven't even got to meet the rest of the endless yet. For one thing, there I, there was only uh desire and uh despair uh, and death and death. Those are the only. Well, other we have we haven't seen the hidden D, which I, I hope just looks like me, basic basically when we finally get to him. The the one episode though that blew my mind was the diner episode. It's like a like a <laughs> it's like a bad acid trip or something. Yeah, the um, I, I bet there are a lot of people who are watching who don't know, but ba okay. basically, it's like it's it's it, it feels like it's almost a movie, just a little bit shorter. It's like one fifty minute episode that's basically just about a crazy guy escapes from an asylum and gets the power to make dreams come true, and he sits in like a midwestern diner and watches as the world falls apart because he's just like watching TV and kind of casually shifting the world around as he wants. And you just see glimpses of everything getting worse outside as like news clips um, and, and, and like updates from, from calls from the outside world and everything he, and everything just kind of disintegrates in the, in the diner. He took away all their ability to lie. And at face value, that sounds like a good thing, but there there's no restraint in what people say to each other. And then emotions just go crazy. And then people start killing each other. Uh, the, the 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 waitress who had a crush on the cook uh, finally made her move and said she wanted to Whoa. fuck. Spoilers. Oh, spoilers! Oh, sorry. All right, Ben doesn't understand. I'm, I'm kidding. It was it's a good show. It's, ben I recommend. doesn't understand how how spoilers can hurt somebody's viewing. Experience. I mean, like it doesn't. It it's not like the conclusion of anything. It's just like some fucked up stuff that happened in it. It's craziness. I just need to know that girl didn't try and finally admit to wanting to bang the cook. That that ruined it for me. <laughs> she admitted to wanted to bang the cook and then he showed no interest and was like, I'd rather have your son. 
It got, <laughs> yeah. It got, honesty. Honesty yes. fucks you up. Yes. It gets dark. But that's fair. Because if, if I hear that and then he's like, I don't want you. I'd rather bang your son. I'm like, okay. Now yeah. I'm going to kill you. This is the new comic book. This is the new comic book. Murder. If I, if I wanted to bang, if I wanted to bang this cook, and then he says he'd rather bang my son, now I gotta murder him. I mean, he like it, insinuated that he had been <laughs> doing Spoilers. it. Oh, so he had been. Spoilers. Ben spoiling. Sheesh. Tisk 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 tisk. Shut tisk. up, Egghead. It's okay when Ben does it. It is okay, Egghead. I think the thing that I can say about the Sandman adaptation that is the most positive is that they could have cast. Benedict Cumberbatch as Morpheus, and then they didn't. And I really appreciate that they didn't do that. Uh, the guy they did cast looks so fucked up, and it's actually perfect for the role. And I, I really appreciate that. They did a really yes. good job. Did they finding, have the opportunity like, to work with him? He was like free and available, or I, I don't. I, I'm, I, I'm just assuming oh, that okay. somebody would have made that casting choice if given the opportunity. And I'm glad they weren't in charge. You know. Yeah. He's it's, so fucked up looking. I can't stop looking at his like. He looks ridiculous, which is good. That that's. Correct. He looks very sad all the time. He he's has that. So, he looks like he's gonna cry. He's like yeah. the most powerful being in existence, and every all the time he looks like he's about to start sobbing. It's fucking perfect. It's so good for the character. Here's what he looks um, like normally. Oh, sorry. I, it's, 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 he looks like a holy member of Good Charlotte. <laughs> wow, I would not have called that at all. He looks so different just standing there. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of surprised, too. Spoilers. Spoilers. This is what he actually Spoilers. looks like. Spoilers. This is the actor. Yeah. Ugh. Robert Pattinson um, look-alike. That's what the kids are saying. Did you Did you guys like the Batman? Uh, I didn't get to see. I didn't watch it. I saw it in really? theaters. Yeah. I saw I, it in theaters four times. I was like, this is a three-hour movie, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like it, so I just never watched it. I went to see it the first night, and I didn't know if I was missing something, so I went back to see it the second night, because I was, did I just miss like something important to the movie? And I realized I didn't miss anything. The movie was just fucking a, a slow drag that didn't really deliver on, the, on the, all the aspects I was expecting it to. Whoa! And, and then I went back a third time with a friend because he's he had to see it for himself to, to see if it was good, and he was like, "No, it sucks." And the fourth time I went back was with family, and they're not movie uh, buffs; they just enjoy movies. They loved it, and I wanted to die halfway through having to watch it for the fourth time. But it was uh, such a, I feel like the movie succeeded amazingly in a lot of things that I tend to really care about. And in a lot of other ways, was was very frustrating. What, what do you think? Um, what do you think was a payoff that you loved about it? Well, for, so for me, it was an amazing tone piece, and Gotham has never artistically captured me that well. At least not since um, the DC animated universe, Batman and Batman Beyond cartoons. I really um, liked Batman Returns. I, lo I loved. I yeah. I, oh oh. Um. Uh. Batman Beyond: Return of the Joker. Legit. One of the best like animated movies, in I'm my opinion, in like the superhero. Um. In the superhero genre, but th the problem with me is like, in the Batman Dark Knight trilogy, Gotham just looks like Chicago. It doesn't look like superhero yeah. anything. It's fucking Chicago. But in in the Batman, the 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 city is so fucking moody. Um. It's so like heavy and weighted with all the like corruption and income inequality and all the misery. You can feel it dripping from the scenery. And that like I was consistently impressed with it, I, I think, on an artistic level. Also, Batman yeah. was very hot. I wanted to fuck him. He was a <laughs> fuckable Batman. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah that Pattinson was the most can get it. Pattinson can get it. The 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 uh the scenery was great. I, I I did enjoy that because when I was watching him walk to the Nirvana song for five minutes at a time, um, it, it was great to be able to look at the scenery in the background, so, knowing that he was going to be walking for five minutes to the fucking Nirvana song. I'm so confused though because <laughs> so they they recast Batman with Pattinson, but now this Flash movie's coming out and both Affleck and Michael Keaton are in it, right? It's just a different universe. The ah. same way. The same way that the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix is different than Jared Leto. 
We need to drop all that Snyderverse bullshit. Those movies fucking suck, and they're like artistically irredeemable. There's not even anything, man. There, it, there's not even anything to fucking pull from them. Like the Batman could have had an hour trimmed off of it, but I think everyone can agree there's something nice there. But like, holy shit! I, um, with the Batman, I felt like they weren't showing me his detective work. They were just giving me the end result. Like he he deduced it off camera, and I'm like, he doesn't. He doesn't do detective stuff anymore, really. Batman the, like, is supposed it, to be the greatest he's... detective. Everybody's like, oh, see all the detective work he was doing? But they didn't show any of it. It was just like they got to the point, and it was like, here's this. This Batman solved this. And it's like, how did he solve it? We don't know. He just did. He's Batman. But they never do that anymore. They don't do it in the Snyder stuff. In the Dark Knight trilogy, he he, they, he doesn't fucking do any detective work. Um, he just runs around and growls at people. Yeah, but uh, in, like, any, in any who done it, if you're gonna go back to a who done it, I want to see the fucking thing real really play out. I want to see how he got the fucking answers. Right? I want I, I want to see the James Gunn Lobo film with Jason Momoa as Lobo, because that. Is like the perfect cast. Yeah, the, the, the Snyder universe. The crazy thing about that is that Aquaman was the most successful film in it. Aquaman had never gotten a film before. Like, I I didn't watch the Aquaman. It movie. was good. At, it was fine, but you know, I I I'm interesting to see. I'm interested to see what James okay, Gunn does. Can can we acknowledge something? I think I think I've figured this out, and I've got a fucking fact to drop right okay. now. All the best shit in Batman is not something he's doing solo. It's him interacting with other people because Batman is a repressed, psychotic, autistic weirdo. And he's always super serious. And watching him interact with other people is a great way to get a, a vibe in on his character. Like in the original, like the, the Batman animated universe stuff, like Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Batman on his own just was like standing there. But talking to other people, he's amazing because it's very funny. And what we need in a Batman film is is an honest-to-God Robin. I don't even like Robin as a character. Maybe they can find one that will make me care about them. But we need another person who, through circumstance, is with Batman for the whole movie. Not for little snippets where Batman gets to act cool for a second, then disappear out of nowhere, but to see him be awkward, to, to, to force him into conversations he doesn't necessarily want to be in, but he's, like, not trying to be a dick or be rude, so he has to, like, stand there and do small talk. Like, I want... like. I the like you remember the 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 Dark Knight uh, Rises comic from Frank Miller um, yeah. back in the day, yeah. Th his interactions with Robin were the best part of that comic because she's like sixteen or something, and she's like, "I love I love flying we," and he's like, "Okay, we have to do fascism today. Calm down. All right, let's <laughs> let's talk. Okay, we have we have to be fascist Uber mention today. Okay, let's let's get in the tank. Get in the bat tank. All right." It was the best part of the thing. We need a proper fucking Robin. Who do we get to play Robin? Not Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Is it is it going to be Timothy Chalamet and they're going to have to fuck? I, I okay, feel like, I have an idea. I feel like the guy who plays Morpheus. Oh, I, that could work. Just yeah. dressed up as Morpheus. Just have somebody who looks like the crow, like a goth yeah. boy with Batman. I feel like the thing that makes Batman interesting is the villains. Like Batman's it's kind of the opposite with the rest of DC where like it, it's not quite it's it's the opposite but Batman is more that's why Batman has the coolest vi villains in DC Batman has to work with Joker who he springs from Arkham because there's another third threat that Joker has tenuous connections to and he's being a bitch about giving up info but the police aren't being cooperative and the deadline's looming so Batman has to break Joker out and it's literally like a buddy cop dynamic between the two of them where Batman's keeping a mega close eye but the Joker's still very smart and wily so he's still causing shit and like putting like starting fires and Batman has to keep putting it out and trying to figure out how to work and he's like desperately trying to balance all this together and the commissioner isn't working with him because he fucking sprung out the Joker. Dude I I feel like there are so many premises to work with here, but they keep on just having Batman be Batman. People, people were thinking when you said Morpheus, they they thought they were like thinking Lawrence Fishburne from The Matrix. Adam from I the movie you, sucks. Thought, said Lawrence yeah. Fishburne. Oh, d was that Adam that said that? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. True though. Uh, or him. That would be fine as well. I would also like to see dialogue between Batman and Lawrence Fishburne. I'm saying people say Jaden Smith to. should play Robin. <laughs> I would I, I would Holy watch Jaden Smith and Robert Robin or Robert Pattinson. I would watch that. I would. I would go. I would pay real money too. I wouldn't use my card because I wouldn't want the regular theater I go to to know I saw it. 
So I go to okay. like one of those side theaters. Okay. A series of cyber crimes is destabilizing Gotham, all right? And the only way that Batman can solve the case is by working with a like 17 year old insufferable like zoomer tiktoker who like flosses and says for real no cap um and and together they are the, the key to solving the city's problems instant classic the new villain all right we always we always take these villains we, we had the um what was the the one um from the batman the riddler right he he played like the fuentes um type he was the he was the the the, the red pill he was streaming on cozy he was the red pill guy right that, that's what that's what he was am i wrong about that yeah like, do, do we have like the joker come back but this archetype is he's mr beast and he's just like throwing money at people to do crazy crimes would, would that would that work as the fucking hook for a batman yeah i I just want Batman to like interact with regular people because that's really funny. You know, like right, like isn't that it? It's, 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 it should, yeah. It's it should. We should have that. We should. It, it should be able to have that. Funny man, straight man combo. Except the thing is, in a lot of ways, Batman actually plays the funny man because. A person acting normal and being normal around Batman, they would be the more like socially conventional one. Batman, if anything, is the goofy guy because he's in a fucking bass bat suit growling all the time. So he gets to be like the straight comedy man up against the more relaxed straight man. I, I feel like this just needs to be done and everyone who isn't doing it is is bad. Like Commissioner Gordon's got to put up with his shit. And take him less seriously, you know? Did you watch Peacemaker at all? I don't know what that is. It's, an, it's, it's I think, the first thing James Gunn did for DC. Peacemaker's another one of those really old uh, characters from DC that hasn't been really used in a long time. Uh, it's play, He's played by John Cena. And I think it just got renewed for a second season, but it's not going to come out for like oh, another year. Oh, I yeah, I heard about this. It uh, was very, like this. it was very violent and like hypersexual, and it had that James Gunn touch where music is a big part of it. It was, it was pretty interesting. And I don't like John Cena, so that says John a lot. Cena. There, he's a big guy. He's a yeah, he's boy. a pro wrestler. He's he's got some hammer to slam. I'm I'm looking. We should at, watch this. I'm it's pretty the, good. Yeah, is is good. The, the chat's saying that the Harley Quinn show was kind of des describing the Batman that you were talking about, the Harley Quinn cartoon. I think they're saying that in the chat. Is it that's that's like the adult cartoon, right? Didn't yeah. they fuck and like make the whole city fuck? I think so. I, I remember I seeing a bunch of people post about that on Twitter. I didn't watch it like independently, but this kid was watching it when I was in the room, and I was like. I was like, oh, you probably shouldn't be the, watching this. And he was like, fuck you, it's Batman. The peacemaker, <laughs> Peacemaker's uh, father is a white nationalist supervillain. What was his name? Yeah, I can't remember the name of the character, and but it's it, played it, by uh, the T2 guy. Yeah, yeah, the, the T-1000. Yeah. The, he was in the X-Files for a little while. He replaced Mulder. The he white dragon. White, the the white, white dragon. White dragon. Yes. The white dragon. Yeah. Robert Patrick. What dragon? So if we're going to be nerding out a little bit, can I can I give a little bit of speculation, a call I want to make right yeah, now? Yeah, sure. hit me with the speculation. After now, that, I have to go. We're, okay. we're past the two-hour mark. Okay. Yeah, this is, Apparently, Israel did something sussy. I oh, shit. About it. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, really quick, this is not comic book related. This is a, a nerd thing. Uh, if you got, I don't know if you watch any pro wrestling at all, but I'm calling it right now. I think future... Wrestling superstar is going to be Baron Trump. Just want to put that he out. He is the like ethos. seven feet tall. He's huge. I just yeah. want to put that out of the ethos right now. I think he's about to be the biggest thing in oh, wrestling in about Trump, ten years. Donald Trump used to be so involved in pro wrestling back in the day. If you go back to some of those early WrestleMania, mm -hmm. you can see Trump in the front row with Don Jr. as a little kid, like sitting in the front row. WrestleMania fifty is about to be Logan Paul versus Baron Trump main event. 
<laughs> I would. Man, I remember lefties fucking loved Baron Trump when Trump got into office because even though we don't know it's the case, it's kind of funny to imagine that he's this like sulking teenager who's like six foot, <laughs> six foot 11 or something listening to a Sony Walkman and like yeah. in the White House, like getting mad at, at, at service staff or whatever. And that one day he'll emerge as like a, a proletarian hero. I really hope that happens. <laughs> if he becomes a superstar wrestler, like all more power to him. <laughs> just want to make that call right now before I move on to the next joke. Wrestling is going to happen. Good. <laughs> wrestling, wrestling was so fun. I don't know. I don't think I'll watch again until Baron Trump's champion. <laughs> All right. Uh, get on to. Wait. Is, whoop. Isn't the guy trying to sell off WWE, the really muscular guy? Vince McMahon who... was talking about pushing it. Uh, Maybe to NBC, maybe to Disney Plus, maybe to uh, uh, Saudi Arabians. I don't know. Yeah, and his wife worked in the Trump administration. Uh, she was like the uh, what was it? The SBA. She was one of the. She was the secretary for the SBA. She was one of the longest uh, people in the cabinet too. Yeah. When everybody she else didn't get you know what's, she didn't get fired. You know what's really fucking cool? Do you know how like. The U.S. dollar is the global reserve currency, and American corporations have ridiculous amounts of influence around the world. Yeah. It's really fucking cool how this is happening to us now. Like, uh, the, like the Saudis are increasingly getting involved in a lot of our, um, a lot of our media shit. Uh, I mean, they, they finance like, portions of the, the, the buyout for Twitter. I mean, they've got pretty oh. close ties to Elon Musk. Chi uh, China has like, in increasingly outsized influence. And it's like... Um, Wow, it's it's great to be on the receiving end for once, you know? I love seeing all these other foreign, obviously malicious interests get involved oh, in our there were, politics. Yeah, because because Vince McMahon and WWE, they're in bed with the Saudis. There are wrestlers that have been retired for decades, coming out of retirement to wrestle in Saudi Arabia because they make more money in one night than they had in their whole career prior to that. Well, Vince apparently paid them peanuts for their work, so that's not too surprising. Yeah, yeah. a whole bunch. They held, Vince was arguing with whatever Saudi businessmen set up the well, an event that they had there, and it led to a plane full of wrestlers being basically quarantined on a runway for like twenty four hours because of it. There was a whole news story about it. It was ridiculous. They were like very close to just getting. <laughs> Yeah, it's those exposés on how Vince treated his workers were fucking disgusting. It's it it's really frustrating because it feels like um, the way our corporations are structured opens up an opportunity for more overtly politically minded institutions to step in because we pay our workers so little and we leave so many gaps in our own like economic infrastructure that they can step in, but they can do so really purposefully. Right. Like American corporations acting abroad, sometimes they're working with the CIA. A lot of the times they're just looking to make money, you know, but a lot of the time, like with the Saudi Arabian corporations, of course, the Saudi government has their hand in this. They're half of the corporations themselves anyway. Um, yeah. And they, they, you know, they, they got a lot of power there. It's not it's not great to be on the receiving end. Also, they keep them as they keep their wrestlers as private contractors so they don't have to buy them health insurance, which is like. It's a certainty when you're a pro wrestler that you're going to get injured eventually. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we don't want to take up too much of your uh, uh, politics as has, time. <laughs> as has always been the case, um, I could talk to you both for uh, 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 you know eight hours, uh, easy and clean. Unfortunately, Israel exists. Yeah, um, go go know, take I, care of go take care of the world. Yeah, I've I've tried to uh, I've I've tried to fix that before, but I got banned from Twitch for my suggestion. So, um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. you for having Thanks me for on. joining Seriously. us. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Yeah, you too. We'll see you again. That's always a good time with Vashon. Yeah. I uh, want to apologize to uh, Zoe in our chat who was trying to talk shit the entire time. I was downplaying your shit talk, but I know that what you said in the chat about being able to have sex with Destiny and his wife means you are the authority on Vosh. And I, I apologize for downplaying all that you had said. I apologize, Zoe. Fuck you for acting like I don't know what a limerick is. Motherfucker. 
a limerick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just pissed because Zoe said, oh, that was actually a limerick. And I'm like, I called it a cringe poem. I don't have to get A limerick fuck- is a type of poem. I'm still mad. I've been seething for the last hour. Uh, the last hour. I wanted to play for you <laughs> this uh, this video from Art Van Groh. Oh. Um, she was offered a, a Delta 8 sponsorship, kind of like how we have. And she made a like a, a video talking about it. It's pretty great. Here it is. The raspberries oh. blue vein. Oh, the, at first uh, she shows uh, this can't be this time. Like this has to be an old video from like the summertime because her raspberries are blooming. It's so but cute. It's so cute. It's so cute. Oh my god. That's what it looks like when a girl <laughs> plays with my balls. Your, I got more. Just a finger right up in the bunch sack. There's a spider on that one. It's hanging. Or I would have eaten it. There's Those do not look ready to eat yet. They're too small. They're going to be all sour. This is here. Oh, wait. I think we have a blueberry. Ah, spider web. I wonder how many simps from our audience have gone over to her OnlyFans. Oh, my gosh. Look at all the blueberries. All right, I'm gonna skip right here. All right, here we go. So I have people ask to collaborate all the time, sending products all the time. I actually have something here that I really have to do. Um, But this one in particular, I almost fell for. And whether you are accepting products on the internet from people or you're just buying products on the internet from people, this is important to share. So for example, they're trying to um, collaborate on Delta 8 gummies. Now, I've heard of Delta 8. I've never done Delta 8 before. Asked about it, asked for the ingredients because I had some dietary restrictions. So she gave me the website, read it, and um, I'm gonna read to you my response. She's gonna read her response because she doesn't like the ingredients Uh in in these Delta 8 gummies. Because I think that, like, people need to, like, be edumacated. Hey, blank. I will have to decline your offer for the Delta 8 gummies as the ingredients alone will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one reason to decline. Yeah. But I'm not sold. I think she should have had them. I know you don't make them. You just work for them. But you should familiarize yourself with the ingredients. They're See, eating- now she understands, like, employees... They don't, they, they just work there, you know. Using and how harmful those ingredients are and the effects they have on the human body and the brain that these these effects will bring down the road. I just read that backwards. Please educate yourself on the science behind what these, these ingredients can do to your body. These are the following ingredients on your Delta 8 and products known to disrupt the human body. Science geek here. Corn syrup, natural and artificial flavors. These go, these go destroy your endocrine system specifically. Sodium citrate. Citri- now I really wish Jeff was here. Acid, malic acid, lactic acid. Geez, with the acid, it's like they're trying to kill us. F- <laughs> okay, I mean, like there's all types of acids that don't kill you. I don't know. These sound like murder it's, acids. It's by not the like way, battery acid. Use code peasants advanced global for twenty percent off yeah. your murder. Link, uh, link down in the description. That should. That shit's on fire, man. People love that shit. It's been blowing up. Rebrand as Delta Four Twenty Twenty. That sounds good to me. We got we got Adam yeah. in the chat with the bright ideas. When I when I'm like not feeling funny and I see Adam, I just say what Adam says because I know it's gonna be good. I like Adam's comments. So he's he's almost like your writer in he, a way. Uh, just when he's around, he writes I like jokes Adam's for comments. you. I like them. I like them. Yeah. DNC yellow number five red. Three, I think you just red. sold four or five people on her OnlyFans too. By the way, probably Captain Kool Aid's handlers like, oh, thank you for recommending me the OnlyFans. I just I didn't recommend it. I just I just posed a question. You can't ask how many people got it without thinking four or five people are gonna get it. There's like seven pervs right now having a fresh fap to her OF because of what you said. See, Adam uses Chad GPT to write his videos. We used one to write a story. What was it? An Alex Jones story? We did that one night. 
it was Alex Jones' uh, children's story about gay frogs. Yes, it was so wholesome. I used Chad GPT because I'm a Chad, an alpha Chad. Four blue one. It's sad that we live in a world where... It is really sad that we live in a world that this is in our food. This is allowed to be in our food and the products that we buy. This is absurd. So that's how I responded to my email. Nicely, sincerely. So is she a sponsor? No. Huh. I think she, uh, I think she declined the sponsorship and that was her response. Oh. I'm sure that I'm sure it got deleted. Well, the same way right. she declined her sponsorship, she talked about it and eight people signed up for it. The way you talked about her OF. This is all backfiring. This is all backfiring. No, we're just supporting each other uh, as content creators, right? I guess. <laughs> I suppose. You guys are all sick. And then we can go we can go uh we can go camping at the Sea to Conscious community this summer. It's gonna be great. We can meditate. I can meditate anywhere in the world. You can meditate at the Sea to Conscious community. I think that sounds fun. Those of you that want to use the link below, vanceglobal.com offers the code PESANTS, P E A S A N T S, 20% off your order. Get it now, get it today. Have a wonderful, lovely <clears throat> time with your Delta 8 THC. Nine or the fuck o, they call it. T-H-C-O. T-H-C-O. O, o, o. Um, so we've got like ten minutes left in the show. I'm gonna uh I'm, I'm gonna check out this spaghetti and meatballs that Cobra made. What do you think Cobra you, style? You think it's gonna look good? They're gonna look fantastic. It's your boy King Cobra. We're back. Is there anything that he's made that we've watched over the years that stood stands out to you? You'd be like, I would eat that. Like like I genuinely would want eat to it. eat it, or yeah. I would eat it. No, not that you would. I've seen you chew used gum from the gum wall. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I I would have tried one of those fucking Mountain Dew eggs. Okay. I don't think those I looked to. gross. They did look gross. But okay, I would have tried it. They were like green hard boiled eggs. We are making I feel spaghetti. like Cobra could make and some wild lasagna if he just made sure all this stuff and it was fully cooked. That is a dish where you can keep adding ingredients, but you can't add like crushed up Doritos to Maybe it. Maybe to the top after the cheese is already melted, you just have a little crusty ridge across the top. Meatballs. But these meatballs isn't going to be any old ordinary meatballs. No, wow, he's got some two. energy. These meatballs are going to be stuffed. With mozzarella cheese, yes. baked with a Doritos crust, Ooh, and wrapped I knew it. in bacon. Oh. I actually bought some of that not too long ago. The same brand? Yeah, Farmland. Oh, dude, he dropped Last his phone time again. I tried doing this. I didn't put Doritos or flour on the uh, meatballs, and the cheese oozed out the side. It was a disaster. So for our bacon, we're going to take some of our Country Crock Original. Now, I've done things with Doritos, like make nachos, but instead of regular corn chips, I use Doritos. Like, yeah. I've done that before. All but... hail the world champ. All hail the cringer way champ. Oh. All hail everyone. It hailed here in Washington. Everyone Day. doubted me, by the way. Everyone doubted me. Spoilers, Ben. Yeah, I want a big old dollop of that in there. I got the, uh, the, the pan onto a medium heat. Sprinkle of that in there. Beautiful. And on top of that garlic powder, we're going to hit it with some Bud Lights. <laughs> this cooking video, I am cooking with alcohol, so that is just why the videos are all going to be age restricted. <laughs> it's got to be age man. restricted. I, I think it's with so dumb that if you're under 21, you can't go to a website for like a company that makes beer it's like you're, you you can't even buy it from the website but it's like just to go to a website to read about beer you have to be 21 or over it's but you so don't have stupid. to be 21 or over to read about beer on wikipedia right so go right. ahead but it's because these are the companies advertising so they can't be liable to having underage people on, on their, their website on their website full of advertisements a lot of these websites don't have advertisements as much as they just have like information about their product yeah. 
There we go. That's it's enough. the same for cannabis websites too. Like any company that produces cannabis, if you go to their website and it has like the different strains, but you have to confirm that you're 21 or older to go look at it. That, it's yeah, so it's, dumb. I did ask Siri on how to do this, so I went and did a little bit of research before. He's talking to Siri. Yeah, He's doing research. The recipe here. He's got high energy to start the video garlic off. Garlic this is garlic this is good work, Cobes. Beer and country crock butter spread. We're just gonna plop. This I hate how he uses country there. crock. Well, I grew up eating country crock, and it's it grosses me out now. Just like how when I was a kid, I loved SpaghettiOs, but if I tried it now, it'd probably gross I never me ate out. SpaghettiOs I really loved, as a kid. I loved Chef Boyardee, too. Uh, those <laughs> meatballs that don't have to be refrigerated. They can just sit in a can. That's like one thing about my childhood. I think my dad was made sure to feed me like uh, a lot of whole-style foods. Oh, I like my neither of my parents liked to cook, really, so most of my shit was, like, out of the microwave, you know, like, out of the freezer. I never had real cheese. It was, like, I didn't realize there was other types of cheese other than Kraft Singles when I was a kid, you know? Yeah, my mom um, and dad would always be, like, meat, vegetables, like, a, a good, good cooked meal, no vegetables? microwave. I drink about a half a gallon of milk every fucking day, so I became this gigantic horse. I didn't drink a lot of milk, uh... Bacon makes its own juices. Yeah, I know adding country crock when the bacon's already in there. You could probably just use the bacon fat. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like, have you ever, like, cooked bacon and then put it in the fridge? And you can see all the bacon fat solidify. Uh, it's it's more than enough. It works as a really as a really good fat to cook with. That's why bacon's so easy to cook, too. It almost never sticks. Oh, look at that sexy. Uh, I like deep frying bacon. Oh yeah. Start flipping it. Yeah. YouTube. Right now I'm getting the bacon prepped for our bacon wrap meatballs. I looked it up on Siri on how to do it, so yeah, I'll catch you in a minute. We got six Get eggs you in, a minute. in the bowl right there. We're gonna stir them around. Get those eggs with a little bit of that. It'd be bug funny if you just like shape. drank them like Rocky style. Have you ever seen the Rocky eggs, movies? Uh, yeah, some of them. There's the part in the first one where he's training, he's drinking raw eggs. In our bigger bowl, we're gonna add flour and Doritos crumbs. So stir the eggs and the beer and the garlic salt. It's a quality all shot. Around. You can see the lighting and the we bowl. Have some uh, all-purpose flour. That's most definitely what's up. To nice clean bowl to add all the flour to. All-purpose flour. Most definitely bowl. what's up. Like Tubes. There we go. Put a little bit of that flour. It's in a classic there. dish flour. right there. there so I feel like everyone in Wyoming's got that salad go. bowl, and they make. Potluck mac salad in it. Yeah, if you have like a food processor to make this, it'd be a lot quicker. <laughs> if you have so a food processor, food fine. Processor. You could just grind it up in between you your gothic like rings. Got like a nice orange tint to it. That's what we're looking for. I don't know. I like rolling my meatballs by hand. Rolling them so balls. I don't look, Cope was playing with balls. <laughs> got him. Is he going to stuff it with. Mozzarella still? I got big meatballs. That's fancy big meatballs. So we got like one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 seven, eight, nine. About nine big old meatballs. Right there. So the mozzarella is going Lucrain, outside of it? Company. They make some pretty awesome dairy products. Shout out to all the people There's of Ukraine. Of fucking cheese, dude. You know, what you want to do is just peel that meatball in half. Okay, he is going to pack it in. in there like that. Are those just big chunks of butter? I uh, know that's mozzarella. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, what the fuck? Mm. Chunks of country crock. Is he just I'm eating them? He had to make room. I just realized that Cobra has the face of a walrus without the tusks. Even eats like one. Hashtag Ben Universal Champ no cap. Yeah, you know, if Egghead wants to wants a piece of this, that's fine. All right. 
Yeah, don't eat food while you're handling raw meat. That was super, super no-no. Double batter that son of a bitch. Then we got our fucking Dorito flour mixture here. And hopefully this will help the cheese from oozing out the side. And if it does a little bit, that's just fine. Yeah, it like... Got some Dorito baked meatballs. Mozzarella sticks are very hard to batter and cook because you have to have the oil hot enough to where it cooks the outside, but it doesn't boil the cheese because once the cheese boils, it ruptures out of the batter. So you need a hot enough batter to cook the the breading, but not boil the cheese. I learned that the hard way because uh, I was using string cheese. I take like a piece of string cheese and cut it up and batter it, but the boiling cheese kept like rupturing out of it. Did you get a different it. cheese? I needed hotter oil. I needed like a way to heat the oil up hotter. That is ridiculous, YouTube. What do you guys think? At least his hands are clean. He's making uh, these glam. videos now where he just like farts. I thought it was going to turn out, but I digress. <sighs> okay, there are the meatballs. Yeah. We're not done with them just yet, though. I would hope not. They're not cooked. Oh, no, bacon. he's... Is the bacon cooked? Yeah, he cooked the bacon earlier with the country crock. Oh. I've never tried oh, to yeah. attempt these before, so they look like shit. I apologize. They're bacon, not wrapped. They're laden fuck with bacon. Off. Oh, fucking hell. The bacon doesn't want to stay wrapped around. He's getting mad. He's getting mad. Ah, it's it gets better and better. He's boiling Agent, over. Oh, Agent 006 is asking, how is he not dead from food poisoning? I think his gut is just, his biome is just used to it. There's all sorts of probiotics floating around in his gut. A little bacon pro, flop pro, meatball action. Probiotics. That's how but it is. Now these meatballs are wrapped in bacon. So uh, that's most definitely what's up. Hopefully the cheese in the middle don't leak out the sides. We shall pray. Yeah. Go ahead and. Uh, Stick these in the oven. Why do I feel like he's going to forget there's a toothpick in one of them and just munch into a toothpick and then be fine even though his mouth's bleeding? Like he's act like it's in the fine. oven, bacon-wrapped Dorito that meatballs would suck. stuffed with mozzarella cheese. Going in, YouTube. It's going in. YouTube, what it do? Oh, shit. Those meatballs are done, son. I hope that bacon is cooked all the way. Cobra would be the only person that could make bacon look disgusting. Also, is that a challenge to a cringe off in the future, Ben? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm uh, looking at King Cobra's uh, meatballs here. They the don't look any better after being cooked. Oven for like 45 minutes to an hour, and they are fully cooked. The big old loaf here. It's already baked, but we're gonna toast it in the oven. What's the loaf this for? This time around, they meatball look sandwich. Times better, in my opinion. <clears throat> so I am getting better at cooking. Okay, <laughs> it's really a labor of love, YouTube. If you. <laughs> It's the weekend and my fans are hungry for content. The way he cuts and that bread, it looks like fans. the uh, sandworm creature from Beetlejuice jumping up out of the pan. See, but it's like, man, it's very you Tim Burton spaghetti cut. and meatballs, you gotta have some garlic toast to go with it. Now that we have our uh, bread buttered up, we're gonna add some seasoning to it. Come in here with some of that. Oh, he is making sketty too, huh? I forgot he had sketty and meatballs. It wasn't just the balls. Someone told me he left the meatballs out overnight and then ate them the next day. No. Garlic powder. Like he left them out overnight uncooked? And well, then I, I think he cooked them, but I think he left them out like yeah, he should after be cooking them. Yeah, goodness yeah. that we've been using. Take that mozzarella cheese and we're going to put it on top of our garlic bread all right let's let's skip ahead so we can get oh, to the thrilling it. conclusion okay so oh god it looks couple. like slop oh. did he use ramen noodles for the pasta the next day what is up fellow youtubers so i have a little bit of this apothic red wine 
Ooh. And we're going to do a review of the spaghetti and meatballs that I made. <laughs> Last night I was up till like 2 o'clock in the morning making it. So I turned off the stove once it got done simmering. And before going to bed, and then I reheated it on the stove, the spaghetti anyways. Yeah, dude, it's seriously fucking good. I'm not gonna stunt with you, YouTube. He's like, not gonna the stunt. The flavor profile on that spaghetti is next level dynamite. The flavor Let's profile. Go. Okay, so I already had one of the meatballs that was sitting right there. I ate it. Uh, oh, excuse me. The spaghetti is so tasty. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, macaroni in the pot that Cardi B you was talking about. Asshole YouTubers or trolls who were just like, I wouldn't feed that slop to my dog. Well, first of all, dick fuck. Dick fuck. This pasta has garlic in it, so you shouldn't feed it to your dog. Yeah, don't feed it to Second your dog, all, dick fuck. No one's forcing you to fucking watch, dude. You feel me on that? So yeah, the spaghetti and meatballs. Is oh, it just smells like slop. YouTube. Ah, or I'm sorry, it sounds Ugh. like slop. Are those meatballs or blue waffles? Like garlic bread. I've already been munching out on it a little bit. It's so gross, dude. And uh, these meatballs are literally Doritos baked, bacon wrapped, mozzarella cheese stuffed meatballs. I'm gonna be eating good in this couple of days. <laughs> eating good King Cobbs eating good Holy fuck My guy He's enjoying the fruits of his labor You see the cheese right there at the bottom Oh yeah Little boglum baked oh, onion you got going here. It's so good, YouTube. Mm. So there's that. He's he's always like, oh my god, this is so good. Gourmet Cobes. How often do you cook and you go to eat it and you're like, ah, oh, that that didn't work out. That was shit. I that happens definitely. Um, Probably I don't more know than Cobes does. Cobes never does that. Yeah, right? <laughs> Could you imagine? There's definitely been stuff where I'm like, I'm not eating this. Like, I've cooked, cooked this. You're like, no, I can't do it. Yeah. I yeah. wonder if Cobes has ever done that. Or if he's just like, well, fuck it. I think anyone that cooks like a, a decent amount of their own meals has done that at least a couple times. Do you think Cobes has? Or you think Cobes No, he, like, he loves all of it. He like, always loves it. He's like, same hole, same goal. I'm going to eat it. Same hole, same goal. Got to make this into a turd somehow. Eating it like an apple. It's okay to eat meatballs like apples, isn't it? That's why they're ball shaped. Eating balls like balls. Like balls. Getting slizzard. Uh yeah. Uh so we're gonna wrap it here. Um we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Cause because we hate ourselves. No, because we love you. Yeah, yeah. M I C See you real soon. K Y. Why? Because, because we we're psycho. You. Oh. <laughs> M O U S E. Yeah. We're Good going. Night. Go to bed, everybody. <laughs> Good night.